between these two teams, and we'll be back to set it up right after this. ABC Sports, as ABC and the CFA are proud to present the University of Southern California Trojans and the Sooners of Oklahoma. And hi, everybody, along with Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twybell. Glad you could be with us, Lynn. Great tradition between these two football teams. 14 national titles, seven Heisman Trophy winners, fight songs like Boomer, Sooner, and Fight On. And it used to be student body right in the wishbone. But that's all changed because it's been over 11 months since Southern Cal's won a football game. Their success this year rests on the young right arm of Rob Johnson. Rob Johnson is a young man who's a very accurate passer. And you're right. Their offense rests on his arm. He had a great game against San Diego State. Threw for four touchdown passes in all of 1991. USC only threw for six. But he also fumbled a football twice, and that led to two San Diego scores. If USC's offense is going to have success today, Rob is going to have to play a good, control football game and not make the errors and the turnovers he did two weeks ago. Oklahoma's coming off three years of sanctions against their football program. They haven't won the Big 8 since 1987. They've buried the bone, and Cale Gundy's been brought in to resurrect the passing game. Oh, that's a great football name, yeah. Cale Gundy. And he puts the ball in the air all over the place, and he's, he's got a great arm, a great leader. But to put into perspective the run versus the pass here at Oklahoma, he has completed 27 passes in his first two ball games. Oklahoma in 1985 with Jamel Holloway as quarterback, national champions, only completed 24 in the entire football season. This young man for Oklahoma is the present hope for this football team and the future hope of the Oklahoma passing attack. 62 conference titles between these two teams. The Trojans have won the last three meetings. We'll be back in a moment. Southern Cal, Gary Gibbs entering his fourth year at Oklahoma as head coach. Also working with us today, a guy who was a, well, he was a guy that loved to pass the football in a wishbone offense. A rarity here at Oklahoma. He's with our affiliate KOCO working the sidelines today, Dean Blevins. Dean? Thank you, Roger. Owen Field is a field that has a severe slope to it. We'll show you a look at it. Oklahoma used to take advantage of it with its speed in the running game and the wishing wishbone, but now in the passing game, it's also a factor because it's easy for quarterbacks to overthrow players. It's like running downhill. We'll keep an eye on it throughout the game. Okay, thank you very much, Dean. And getting set to kick off for Southern Cal is Cole Ford, a sophomore out of Tucson, Arizona. As Southern Cal won the toss, deferred, and they are going to take the win. And the uh, receivers back deep, Duell Brewer and Ernest Williams respectively for the University of Oklahoma. A lot of rain early this morning and last night. Lights are on here at Owen Field. Not raining at the moment. Cool day, temperatures high 60s, low 70s. Temperatures had been up around the 90 degree mark just the other day. As we're set to go between these two great colleges with tremendous football traditions. And Williams will take it inside the five. Williams to the 30-yard line. Brought down there by Terry Barnum. As you look at Cale Gundy, who will break every Oklahoma passing record before his career is through and has already broken most of them in his brief time. Ernest Williams, Kenyon Rashid, the fullback, Paul Warren, Joey Mickey is the tight end. Up front, Moriarty, Roberson, Conrad is a true freshman at center, Jeff Ressler, and Jason Cohn. Trips to the far side for Cale Gundy in Oklahoma, first and 10 from the 25. Oh, nearly picked off. The intended receiver was the tight end, Joey Mickey. But the guy who nearly had it was Jeff Cobb, the inside backer from Danville, California. Take a look at this from the end zone. I believe Kel Gundy was checking off as he came to the line of scrimmage. Thought he could take advantage of someone coming in from the outside, but caught number 35, just drifted back, was playing, coming back into his own coverage, was right in the passing lane. I, he threw it right to him. I don't see how he could have not seen him there. That's a beleaguered Southern Cal defense. Gave up 31 points in their season opening tie against San Diego State. Trips to the far side once again on second and ten. Gundy hit from the weak side. Thrown downfield. The intended receiver Tink Collins. But pressure by Willie McGinnis just as Gundy released the football. Defense now for Southern Cal. Let's take a look at Webb Holland and Jones up front. Webb's a good one, number 44. Mike Salmon has been moved from the secondary to linebacker. McGinnis, Kopp, and Williams. 
And then in the secondary, Herpin, Jason Seahorn gets the start today, Stephon Pace and Jason Oliver. And let's keep in mind as Mike Salmon has moved to what we've listed as a linebacking position for the USC defense in 1992, more attack oriented. That outside linebacking position is like having a fifth defensive back in the ball game. Third down and 10, 25 yard line. Gundy is checking off at the line of scrimmage. Throwing it out, it's met immediately. Albert Hall, the receiver, just across the 30 to the 32-yard line. And he was met there by John Herpin, number 23. So that'll set up a punting situation for Oklahoma and a good defensive series for the University of Southern California. Is back inside the 20, number 84, Brad Riddell, averaging just under 40 yards a punt at 38.8. And back deep for the University of Southern California, the speedster, Curtis Conway. This kick into the wind, and Conway will move to the 34. He's met at the 37-yard line. Not much of a return right there, 33 yards on the punt as you take a look at Rob Johnson, set to come in. You see what he's done in his career, four of those touchdown passes against San Diego State in the first week of the season. Estrus Creighton, Wes Bender, the backs, Conway and Morton, maybe two of the finest receivers on the same team in the nation, and Banta is the tight end. Up front, it's Gorecki, Chrisman, Gibson, Pollock, and Baselli. Watch him, number 71. He's a special player. First and 10, 37-yard line. Johnson throws immediately to the near side. The receiver over there, Curtis Conway, and they're calling it a reception, maybe a loss of about a yard as we check out the Sooners with Russell Allen, Ricky Wren, and Joe Correa, the men up front. Beavers 56, watch him along with Reggie Barnes, Mike Coates, and Terry Collier, the linebackers. The secondary, Walker, Christman, Wesley, and Shanklin. Making a loss of three on that last play, second down and 13. Near side, pass intended for Estrus Creighton. And Lynn, let's go over the checklist for today. Well, the USC wants to accomplish five things in this ball game today, most of which, you know, are, are very obvious on the up top there. But the last two, player most on control the defensive perimeter, are a result of their game against San Diego State. They had a lapse in the third quarter, allowing San Diego State to score 17 points and got in that ball game. And Marshall Falk exploited the perimeter of the USC defense, so they want to play better in that aspect. Third down and 13 for Southern Cal. Rob Johnson out of the shotgun. Looking near side, finally across the middle. Open there is Curtis Conway. And Conway across midfield. Darius Johnson, 42, was the man that made the stop. 18 yards on the pickup. Watch Conway and the control. Now, this is a timing route. This play doesn't work unless the inside receiver, Morton, you see right there, clears out the inside. Then he comes by underneath. That's a combination pass pattern. That play does not work unless they're in his own coverage and Morton runs quick, uh, quickly down the middle of the field. First and 10. At the 46, uh, Creighton slips. Field's going to be uh, a little bit slippery today. This is an old turf. Russell Allen was the man on the stop. And We've got to figure if uh, Kale Gundy in the passing game continues here, they're going to level this field off and get a new turf in before too long. Right? Not before too long. They say if they get another great quarterback and continue the passing structure of Oklahoma, they'll do that. But yesterday, the USC players came out onto the practice field for a walkthrough, and at least a dozen players brought out two or three pairs of shoes. They were trying to figure out which was the best, the high tops, the more like a tennis shoe, something of a small cleat. Because as you said, this is an old turf. It's a little different. Second down and 11. Weak side, all over him. Reggie Barnes, number 40, a senior from Grand Prairie, Texas, with his second sack of the year. Last year, led Oklahoma with nine sacks. He was an all big A player. Now watch him. He's going to come from the outside here, just straight in, and he's going to sack the quarterback there, virtually unblocked as he goes in. Nobody touches him. An assignment sack, or missed assignment sack. Swan could have gotten that sack. Third down and 18. Ball 
at the 45-yard line. Rob Johnson throws it underneath the crate. Inside the 45 to the 42-yard line, way short of the first down is Terry Collier and Mike Coates, a couple of the uh, linebackers from Oklahoma, make the tackle. We should make this point for our audience out there watching. This is USC's second game, Oklahoma's third game. They have a chance now to look at themselves in action, and they always scout themselves. So you're going to see a few things that will be a little bit deep, uh, different. So when USC has watched the film of Oklahoma in certain situations, they're going to have to adjust a little bit because now Oklahoma is changing up what they do defensively and offensively. Duell Brewer back to receive the punt from Stonehouse. He angles it to the near side. They can't get it into the end zone. So Oklahoma will have it first and 10 from the 20 when we return 10.44 to go. First quarter from Norman. Oklahoma, along with Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Schweibel, Dean Blevins down on the sidelines. A couple of good defensive series by both teams to start this game. 10.44 to go. First quarter, Sooners have it. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Rashid, the lone setback for Oklahoma. Kenyon Rashid stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Brian Williams, the man that made the tackle. And Lynn, what about the checklist for Oklahoma? Well, Oklahoma's got a number of things they want to really take care of. But look at number two, not allow USC to assault them. In other words, they don't want USC just to run over them, to do what they want at will. And further down the list, succeed with the run. Now, that doesn't mean establish a big running game. That means have enough plays in the running game to make U.S. defense stay honest so the passing game stays open. Loss of one on that last play, second and 11. Eludes some trouble, but he gets in more trouble. A loss of a couple of yards there. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, the wind could be a factor. Right now it's died down. The last possession, it was up to about 15 miles an hour. It's in the face of Oklahoma. The field is wet, but the footing's actually better here when wet. But the quarterbacks can keep the footballs dry. Passing should be unaffected. Shannon Jones was the man that was able to get that time to Cale Gundy. And so now we're faced with another third and 13. Southern Cal had that on their last possession. Oklahoma has it right now with 9.34 to go, first quarter. Gundy comes near side, got his receiver there, Corey Warren. It's going to be well short of the first down. Jason Oliver, the junior out of Bakersfield, number four, was there on the coverage to make the tackle for the Trojans of Southern Cal. So what we thought, Lynn, was going to be a high-powered offensive game, the defenses have come up pretty well in the first couple of series. Well, the offense is attempting in terms of putting the ball in the air, and it looks like Kel Gundy is calling a number of plays at the line of scrimmage. You can be high-powered, but you've got to take what the defense gives you, and right now both teams defensively are playing solid football. Brad Riddell, inside his 15, end over end kick. Curtis Conway looked like he was signaling the fair catch, and he did indeed at the 32-yard line. 41 yards in the punt, time out of the field, no score from Norman. Look at Cale Gundy. Uh, we had dinner with Jack Mildred, now Lieutenant Governor, former quarterback here. I asked him, how many passes were the fewest you threw in one game at Oklahoma? He said one, and that only tied the record. So Gundy's going to break a lot of them here at Oklahoma. As Creighton gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard on the play, 92 Ricky Wren, the nose tackle out of Clovis, New Mexico, and also Russell Allen, the uh, left defensive end out of Oklahoma City, there on the tackle. Rob Johnson, I mentioned the uh, touchdown passes four against uh, San Diego State, but you got to keep in mind that in two games, the Aztecs have given up nine touchdown passes against BYU. Uh, they gave up five, so is that a true indication of the ability of Rob Johnson, or was it the fact that maybe San Diego State's defense is just not that good? We'll find out a lot today as Creighton gets it. Creighton across the 40. He has got a first down up to the 44-yard line where Malin Wesley finally makes a stop. Ten yards on the pickup. Now, one player for the Oklahoma team, Aubrey Beavers. Unbelievable speed, number 56 right there. Watch him just pursuing. He is on the outside trying to have contain. And as he tried to rush upfield, saw the draw. You saw that speed as he came back. 
to make the tackle on Creighton. Beavers is a player that hasn't played in over two years, and he is a very anxious football player, but an exciting player. As out to the far side, the reception made by Yanni Jackson, the tight end. Pickup of about seven on the play. You saw Jackson slip there after catching the football. Drew Christman made the stop and this could be dangerous and out here. he is very lucky they so watch the leg and the angle and the slip right there see how he gets trapped underneath oh yeah now if a, see and all this weight comes back on you talk about stretching and being flexible here's where a player has to be warmed up have good flexibility so he prevents himself from being injured in a situation like that second down and five at the 48 yard line of southern cal 747 to go creighton is met right at the line of scrimmage russell allen He's had 11 tackles coming into this game, 6'5 and 270 pound. Junior out of Oklahoma City was there to step in. Well, the Oklahoma defense hasn't allowed a point in seven quarters. Texas Tech scored nine in the uh, first quarter of that game in Lubbock, and since then, nada. Of course, last week uh, they played Arkansas State, a team that's moving from Division I, AA to Division I. Wasn't much of a contest as the starters played just four series in that game. Third down and three. Ball right in midfield for Rob Johnson and the Trojans of Southern Cal. Trips to the near side. Now a whistle. A confusion on the offensive line. All right. There are some ones in the North Oklahoma team who jump. A good center, if he sees them and he thinks he's in that neutral zone, will snap that Dead ball. ball. Illegal proceedings. Dead ball foul. Delay a game. Offense. Oh. I'm jumping the gun, that delay of game. Larry Smith coming off uh, Southern Cal's worst season since 1957. A lot of pressure on this man. A lot of pressure coming off a three and eight season and San Diego State was a team that, hey, even with Marshall Falk, everybody wanted to see USC win coming off six oh, losing games in the 1991 season. And they came out of that game angry, disappointed, and wanting to make up for it. Third down and eight for Southern Cal. Pressure on Johnson. He goes up the middle, across the 45 to the 47. Not enough for the first down. Ricky Wren once again, and Russell Allen, the two players to bring him down, and that'll set up a punting situation for SC. We've got a defensive battle so far here, Wren. Six seventeen to go. First quarter, Stonehouse back at the 31-yard line, Duell Brewer for Oklahoma. Stonehouse, the true freshman from Pasadena. Brother kicks for Stanford as Brewer makes a fair catch at the 19-yard line. 35 yards on the punt. No score here in Norman, Oklahoma. The 20-yard line. On the back of the scoreboard, OU proudly displays those national championships. Uh, the last one in 85. That year, the only loss to the University of Miami here in Norman. And since then, Oklahoma has won 14 consecutive non-conference games as the run is stuffed by Southern Cal. Herpin, one of the players, number 23, in there on the tackle as Kenyon Rashid and David Webb, the other player for Southern Cal, make the stop. David Webb, 6'4", 225, and he will attack as a defensive player. I mean, he forces things. He really wants to go after people. And you look at his face What, what is he? He's got a mask on, Lynn? <laughs> uh, what, is he, what is he, the Lone Ranger? <laughs> what, what is this? God, Searle, that, yeah. Usually what? you put that black stuff when it's really <laughs> sunny out. I don't know. Second and 11. 524 to go, first quarter. Yes! They yes! try to get it to Rashid on a screen. Out to the far side, and nothing going. Good pressure once again. Brian Williams uh, out of Dallas, Texas, a sophomore, number five, was there to apply some of the pressure. And also, Stefan Pace was on the coverage. Look at Kenyon Rashid, a senior from Kansas City. He came here thinking they were going to run the wishbone, and now as a senior, well, he ends up not getting to carry the ball too much. Not getting to carry the ball too much, but he is a very good receiver for this yeah. team. Very quick, getting from that fullback position. Third, third down situation for Oklahoma. Third and 12, Gundy checking off once again at the line of scrimmage. 
Pressure, Gundy falls down, but the pass nearly completed. It was there, Albert Hall should have had it, he dropped it. The pressure by Lamont Hollingquist, the senior from Linwood, California, and they've been in Gundy's face almost every pass of the time. Hollingquist didn't start this game. He's gonna come in from the outside, just, and he is unblocked, just as Barnes was unblocked in the series for Oklahoma. He gives him a, a tough shot to the head, takes him down. Riddell standing inside the five. Conway, the fair catch at the 46-yard line, so Southern Cal with good field position, 36 yards on the punt. Series record, 4-2-1, the last meeting in 1988. Southern Cal won that one 23-7, and Lynn, you played in a couple of these. Yeah, I was involved in that, about uh, two-thirds of that 2-1 two part there. <laughs> you were, were killed, crucified, 1971 on this very field. Great foot, ran for over 200 yards. And then my senior year, we played them, and uh, it was a 7-7 tie. Barry Switzer was a tough man to go against. I think you caught two passes that day. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten from the 46-yard line. Creighton across midfield. Creighton cuts it back. Tripped up at the 39-yard line. Shankle makes the tackle. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. Illinois and Houston and Jason Verdusco is going to work. He was down 3-0. He finds Darren Boyer coming out of the backfield who keeps it on the sidelines, breaks a few tackles, and gets it down to about the two-yard line, setting up the touchdown by Wagner Lester, 7-3. Back to you, Roger. Thank you very much, uh, John. No score here, 4.50 to go first quarter, but uh, Southern Cal, good field position inside the Oklahoma 40. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. Rob Johnson going deep, nearly intercepted. The intended receiver was Johnny Morton, Malin Wesley, the freshman from Houston, to break it up. Take a look at this from the end zone. Johnny Morton is a terrific receiver, but there are always things you can learn. Now, when he comes in for this pass, he should take the angle off this ball, go for it at the high point because he's in traffic, and somebody's coming across. If he sits back and waits for it, this is what's going to happen. There, Malin Wesley has a chance to pick it off as opposed to Morton going after the ball. And Morton is an aggressive receiver. Normally, he would do that. Oklahoma's picked off two passes this year. They've both been returned for touchdown. Second and 10 from the 38-yard line. They'll swing it out to Creighton on the near side. Creighton's got one block down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Greg Wilkins, number 90 to make the tackle. Also, Darius Johnson, 42. Estrus Creighton. Showing some good moves here. Whenever you have defenses that are aggressive or trying to put pressure from the outside, put pressure on an obvious passing game, you're going to be more susceptible to draws and to screens. Both teams will attempt to utilize those plays throughout this ballgame. Third down and one at the 29-yard line. SC one of three in third down situations. Bender, the fullback in there. He'll lead the blocking. Creighton. Good second effort, but he can't get the first down. Aubrey Beavers, 56, the first man there. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Roger, Oklahoma's defensive coordinator, Tom Hayes, talked to his secondary a moment ago, and he said, keep an eye when USC goes trips to one side, three receivers, watch the inside receiver on an in route. We'll keep an eye on that. Thanks, Dean. Fourth down and two. And Southern Cal will send in Cole Ford to attempt the field goal. 47-yard field goal attempt. His career long is 39. But he did hit a 54-yarder in high school in Sabino High in Tucson, Arizona. The holder, the coach's son, Corby Smith. This with the win. And it's no good. A few Southern Cal players, including Cole Ford, saying, hey, what's going on here? Look looked good from where I was standing at. Well, from where I was standing watching the field, you couldn't tell that it was a bad field goal. We'll take a look. He has the time. Very calm. Let's watch the ball. Boy, that is... From the uh, right. that, that looks good, Lynn. That looks real good. Now, that was above the upright, obviously. He had a lot of wind behind him. Good leg. And take a look at this again, folks. This ball looks like it comes down. Now, we don't know at what point it's over the uprights. Right there, it looks like it even hits the uprights a little bit. Back on the field, penalty marker is down. Penalty marker is down. As Oklahoma with possession of the football, and uh, the runner there 
Number 23, Duell Brewer, and a holding call is going to go against the Sooners. John Laurie is the referee. This is a split crew from the Pac-10 and the Big 8. And with respect to the officials, especially with that last call, the only way you can get... Offense, 10-yard penalty, spot foul. Repeat first down. In that situation, uh, a good position to see whether that's a good kick or a bad kick on the field goal is to have a camera right there underneath the goal post and one perpendicular to it to see all the angles. Cale Gundy, last year uh, Oklahoma threw about uh, just over 17 passes a game. Uh, they're well ahead of that mark this year. First and 17 from the 23-yard line. Oklahoma has not been able to muster anything offensively yet with 2.40 to go, and they'll swing it out to Rashid. Kenyon Rashid still battling, and he gets to the line of scrimmage, and this is a very aggressive defense for Southern Cal. Both coaches, Lynn, told us they thought this game would be won by the seven men up front, and so far, that's holding true. Because both teams intend to come after the quarterback. They intend to put seven, eight guys up on the line of scrimmage at times. I think we're going to see uh, the teams blitz a good deal more uh, and try and protect that outside with the blitz. So there are going to be some lanes that open up. This was a much maligned defense. Gave up uh, four and a half yards per carry last year. 82nd in the nation in pass defense. I'm speaking, of course, of uh, Southern Cal. Suffered their worst defeat ever at uh, California last year. Second down and 16 for Oklahoma. Gundy going down. Field. Got it. At the 47-yard line, the reception made over there by P.J. Mills, the freshman from Enid. And this is a kid that they think's got a great future here. P.J. is going to have a terrific future. On this play, Gundy gets great protection, gives him enough time to go downfield. Now, he is a true freshman, 5'11", 172 pounds. He just runs a very precise route and takes Mike Salmon to the sideline for the catch. 23 yards on the reception. Look at Lenny's averaging nearly 40 yards a catch coming into the game. That sounds like the old Oklahoma. First and 10 at the 47-yard line of the Sooners. 1.50 to go. First quarter. Kenyon Rashi, hard running to the 45-yard line. Pickup of about eight yards by the senior. Out of Kansas City, Missouri, averaging 6.6 yards per carry. Gideon Merle made the tackle for Southern Cal. There's a look at Rashid. Spends his free time as an intern at the local ABC television station. Obviously, he wants Swan's job before it's all said and done. Or he wants your job. Well, because he came over to us and said, now, my name is pronounced Kenyon. Yeah. He said, some announcer announced it Kenyon. My mother went up and told the PA announcer, knock it off. It's <laughs> Kenyon. Second and two. And going nowhere. Tackled at midfield was Brewer. Brian Williams, the inside backer out of Dallas, a sophomore, had nine tackles in that first game against San Diego State, was there to make the stop. Well, he obviously was coming on a blitz from the inside linebacking position, and he is the fastest linebacker for Southern Cal. But what he has to do is just use, use the tools that he has. The coaches have said he's got it, he's got the ability, but he just has to go out and play. And, and so far in this first quarter, he seems to be doing just that. That sets up a third down and seven, right at midfield for Oklahoma. Gundy! That was nearly picked. John Herpin, who wears number 23 on defense. Estrus Creighton wears number 23 on offense. Not to get you folks confused, the guy's not playing on both sides. But uh, he makes the... Uh, the deflection right there, and that'll bring up a punting situation once again for the Sooners. Brad Riddell. The punt it, and back deep will be number 24, Mike Salmon, a junior out of Phoenix who uh, moved from a strong safety spot to an outside linebacker position. Another end-over-end -end kick. Fair catch being called, and bounces back. Oklahoma's going to be able to down it inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Monday night, Smash Mouth football's back. Soldier Field in Chicago's the side as Lawrence Taylor will lead the Giants in must-win situation against Mike Ditka's hard-hitting Bears. All live this week at 9 Eastern on ABC's Monday Night Football. And can the Giants get it back together? Well, all the players uh, have come out and said, Pepper Johnson, LT, has come out and said, hey, you know, we've got to just go out and play. And we can either go play or put our heads between our legs and give up early in the year, and I, I don't think you could ever see Lawrence Taylor give up on the season. We'll get everybody fired up and we'll be a tough ballgame. 
Just 16 seconds to go first quarter. No score in this game at Owen Field and Norman. And off goes to Creighton across the 20 up to the 23-yard line where Reggie Barnes makes the stop. Creighton's a junior college transfer from Rancho Santiago where he was a two-time All-America as we come to the end of the first quarter in Norman, Oklahoma. No score between the Sooners and the Trojans. Back here to Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. Better than 72,000 on hand as we start the second quarter. No score between Southern Cal and Oklahoma. Pass inside the 35 intended right there for Travis Hanna. Darius Johnson, number 42, the man on the coverage. And Lynn, let's take a look at those uh, statistics from the first 15 minutes. Well, I don't think it's surprising to uh, anyone today that we see both teams passing the ball more than running. But this number right here, this three for OU. Now that's great defense by Southern Cal, just forcing the issue. They've got to be able to get a better run production out of that offensive unit for Oklahoma in order for them to have more success in the pass. If they don't, USC just sits back in the passing lanes, puts pressure on, and they can't move the ball. Third down and six from the 23-yard line. Johnson, good catch right there at the 30. The man making the grab for the University of Southern California, Curtis Conway. The defender, Darnell Walker, was all over him. And Walker is a good one. Four interceptions and 12 pass breakups a year ago to lead the Big 8 in that category. He had an interception last year. Now they're in man coverage at the top of the screen. He gets a good bump and stays right with him. He's got good speed. And there he makes a good break on the ball, preventing Conway from turning upfield and turning a small catch into a big game. Walker was a guy that uh, broke London's record of passes uh, without an interception. He did that, of course, last year in the Gator Bowl on a first and 10 from the 32-yard uh, line. Not much going right there. Allen and Wren in on the stop of uh, Creighton. You know, one of the things about Southern Cal this year, the first time ever they've ever had to start with three road games, not to mention two buys in between. So they were off last week play this game off next week, then they have to go to Washington. Then they don't even get home until October, October 10th. to play a game. Yeah. Until October 10th, and uh, it's tough, but you know, Larry Smith you know, has to deal with the schedule someone else made for him, and I think his team will be prepared for it as best as, as he can do it. Somebody else is always making those schedules up, aren't they? <laughs> Second and 10 from the 32-yard line. Johnson flushed out of the pocket, going to take it up the middle. Johnson's still going to midfield to the 49-yard line, where finally Drew Chrisman and Mario Freeman, number 44, finding 18 yards on the pickup for Rob Johnson, a guy, folks, that doesn't like to run the football at all. He doesn't have great foot speed, but what he does is he runs smart. He looks at the pressure and the coverage. He says the middle is open. He just runs straight down the field. Now watch who makes a tackle coming back, okay? Coming back right there, number 44. That's Mario is, Freeman. He's a linebacker yeah. who is rushing in on the play. First down and 10 from the 49-yard line. Second quarter, Creighton up the middle. He gets to the 45. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Guys, I have a uh, family in turmoil here. My old center at Oklahoma, Jody Farthing, he's married a USC girl, Lisa. Family in trouble? Real bad right now. USC. USC. I'm on live in California. We'll see if they can make it throughout the game. Back to you guys. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got some trouble down there, huh? He, he didn't look real happy. He didn't look very happy, did he? Second and six. Creighton, they fake the uh, reverse as Creighton gets back to the line of scrimmage at the 45. And even though, Lynn, that play didn't work, gives the defense something to think about. Well, it's, it's one of those plays that you run based on your last game and what you think the defense is going to pay attention to. Conway, great speed. He had the quick screens for a two touchdown, one of which was called back. They ran the reverse, great degree of success on the reverse. So if you're watching him, you have to pay attention and watch that flow. So you shift and go with it. Run that fake a couple of times, make people stay home. Then eventually flip it out to him and let him run with the ball. Gray and Coates were the men that made the stop on that last play. Third and six now, the 45-yard line. Johnson checking off at the line of scrimmage. Across the middle, catch is made there, and a beautiful grab by Curtis Conway as Darius Johnson makes the tackle, but Conway has shown you the ability to catch the ball in traffic. 
They talk about focus. They talk about concentration. Take a look as he goes in traffic. He's going to be attacked from deep in the secondary by number 24, Drew Chrisman, right there. Now, a lot of receivers would drop the ball at that point because you don't have a firm grip on it. Curtis Conway is developing the concentration that you need as a wide receiver. Conway, 4.25 in the 40, 10.28 in the 100 meters. First and 10 at the 38-yard line of Oklahoma. They'll give it to Creighton, picking his way through the middle. Creighton down to the 33-yard line. Estrus Creighton is tackled by Malin Wesley and Darnell Walker. Early in the ball game, we showed you the Oklahoma University checklist. And we said, have success with the run. Creighton is giving us an example of what that means. It's not the big gains. He's not breaking something big and long on the outside. USC isn't trying to go to the run consistently, but he is having some success running the ball up the middle of the field. That means the inside line and defensive attack of Oklahoma has to stay home or else he'll be more susceptible on the outside. Second and five, Creighton one more time. He's stuck right at the line of scrimmage. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. Ford and Tennessee and Shane Edge back to punt, and Tracy Smith gets two hands on it, blocks it for Tennessee. This would set up a Heath Schuler touchdown run, his fourth rushing this year. They lead 7-0. Roger. Thanks, John. No score here in Norman between the Sooners and the Trojans. 10.46 to go first half as the Trojans have got a drive put together here. Rob Johnson, sophomore quarterback for Mission Viejo, California, played high school ball for his dad. Brother Brett, quarterback at Michigan State, he is rushed. He gets it to Conway, and Conway is tackled at the 32-yard line by Darius Johnson, the junior from Terrell, Texas, was right there. And he is pumped up. He is pumped up. Darrell Johnson runs about a 10-5, 100 meter. And that was a screen. They were trying to set up the middle of the screen to Conway coming back across the middle. Big rush by Oklahoma. They let him come through. But Johnson was able to come in at an angle and stop Conway. This will set up a fourth down and four at the 32-yard line. And Cole Ford will come in to attempt a 50-yarder. Now, this is the wind has died down a bit. But if there is a breeze, it's in his face. He missed from 47 yards out early. That was blocked. That was blocked. Number eight, William Shanker came busting through and got a piece of it. Take a look. Shanko's at the bottom of the screen. He comes through. He's not blocked. So the blocked field goal by Shanko. No score here in Norman. So Oklahoma will take it over offensively after Southern Cal put together a 12-play drive that resulted in no points. Larry Smith was talking about that yesterday and how in college football today you can score so quickly and that if you put these big drives together where you eat up that yardage on the ground and you come away with nothing, what a wasted effort. As to the 39-yard line, Ernest Williams makes the carry. There is Kenyon Rashid, and our report is that he's suffering some bruised ribs, so he has come out of the game for the moment, the senior from uh, Kansas City. And in the backfield, Ernest Williams, a junior from Aurora, Colorado, and Duell Brewer, a senior from Lawton, Oklahoma. Kenyon was telling me about how excited he gets about playing the big big games and some of the young players are asking about playing big games because you never know about it until you experience it. It's the only way I can explain it to you. Eight yards on that last pickup, second and two from the 40-yard line. Quick drop, the receiver Tink Collins has got it. First down for Oklahoma. John Herpin makes the tackle. So Tink Collins, a senior from Ponca City, had just one reception in the previous two games, but Oklahoma's been able to spread it around so far this year. 12 different players have caught passes, and in their two victories, nine different receivers in each game. So first and 10 at the 47-yard line. Five different receivers so far today have caught passes for Oklahoma. Near side, the intended receiver there, P.J. Mills. The ball was thrown behind him. Herpin 23 once again on the coverage for the University of Southern California. That's interesting as we look at Cale Gundy there. 
the switch from wishbone to a passing attack, three of Oklahoma's wide receivers are former quarterbacks, Tink Collins, Albert Hall, and Otis Taylor. They had to really go and find some receivers in a hurry, but they, they do, but traditionally, a lot of the best athletes in high school play quarterbacks. So you get them in the program not knowing for sure exactly where you're going to have them play, or most of them. All right, Southern Cal showing blitz all over the place that time, and they make the contact, and the penalty will be against SC. Terry McDaniel, 78, one of the players that uh, jumped off sides there. Dead ball, off sides. Defense, five-yard penalty. Now keep in mind the center for Oklahoma is a true freshman, six foot five, 316 pound J.R. Conrad from Fairland, Oklahoma, who came in as an offensive tackle and about two weeks into training uh, was switched to a center. And matter of fact, there are a lot of this, these are both young football teams and a lot of true freshmen Lynn playing on both sides of the ball today. Oklahoma with a, quite a few on offense and they're playing strong and actually playing well for not having that kind of not having any experience. That's Kenyon Rashid who has checked back into the game. He is close to the first down at the 43 yard line. Jeff Kopp made the tackle 823 to go first half and no score between these two teams who have racked up an incredible number of points in their the, the three games that they've played so far. It is amazing to me that Kenyon Rashid is in this ball game if he could possibly have bruised ribs and be that sore to come out and still play in this ball game, it's, it's, a, it's a great example of how important he feels this game against Southern California is to himself and to this young football team. Of course, I mentioned the points, 31 for Southern Cal in their first game. Oklahoma has scored 34 at Texas Tech, 61 to nothing against Arkansas State. On a third and one, and the handoff goes to Williams. And he has got enough for the first down. As they brought in a double tight end formation, Williams leads Oklahoma in rushing, receiving, and scoring. A speed back. He's got 4.3 speed in a 40-yard dash, but sometimes when you go out to a football field and you're dancing around like that when you only need one, you end up hurting yourself. He almost did not make up that first down. There's J.R. Conrad, the freshman we were talking about, shaking up on that play, and he's trying to tell him, I'm fine, leave me in here. J.R. is a 6'5", 316-pound freshman. 316 pounds playing center, where you have to make a lot of line calls. You have people come at you from a variety of different angles. It's a tribute to his, his intelligence in terms of the game of football to, to learn all of this and play and start for this team. But the reality is, just your own opinion, you don't think freshmen should be playing, do you? I don't think freshmen should play. I think freshmen uh, should be ineligible uh, their first year uh, in college football. For varsity. Play. For varsity right. football. It gives them a chance to adjust to college life uh, and get squared away before they have to spend so many hours at practice and taking on the responsibilities of traveling on weekends. 52, Brent Koontz has checked in, and there's a fumble immediately. So the first snap between the new center, Brent Koontz, and quarterback Cale Gundy results in a fumble that Gundy does come up with. You know, I think I, he was a little nervous. You know why? Looked like they're going to run the option. <laughs> Take a look at this. Now, if this doesn't look like they're setting up to run the option to you, watch the blocking. You see him? He's getting ready to run down the line. Uh, guards pulling. Guards yeah. pulling. He's got the fullback coming up. I think he was a little nervous. Oh, am I going to have to keep this ball and run? You know, like, like in baseball, when a, when a pitcher comes in to get some warm-up tosses, I think when they change centers, they ought to let him take a couple of snaps, huh? No, not, you're, not, you're not going for that. Not. Okay. <laughs> Second and nine from the 41. Gundy, the quick drops. Got his receiver there, Albert Hall, inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. John Herpin was the man on the coverage, and Albert Hall with 12 yards on that pass play from Cale Gundy. Take a look at it from behind the defense. A little pressure coming from the outside. Nice pass low. The receiver just gets under. That's a terrific grab by Albert Hall. Now, yes, there's a flag on the play. I'll tell you, also on that play, Brewer. Legal procedure, six men on the line of scrimmage, five-yard penalty, offense, repeat second down. One of those wide receivers, Lynn? That may have been. <laughs> Brewer, number 23, had a great block on Mike Salmon, who came in blitzing on that play to give Gundy the time. But then Brewer had to go off the field. And he looked like he hurt himself to some degree. Second down and 14 from the 46-yard uh, line. 
as you take a look at uh, John Hurley, the sophomore from LaPorte, Texas, who's been tested uh, several times today. Uh, shifting around by the Southern Cal defense, 6.59 to go, first half, and Gundy. Now, there was a little miscommunication there. 82 Joey Mickey was uh, running the crossing pattern, but number two was right behind him, Corey Warren, and there seemed to be a bit of confusion between the receivers and the quarterback on that play. Well, I, I think more than confusion, it was number 55, Willie McGinnis, going in against Paul Moriarty, number 64, the tackle. He came rushing up on the outside, putting a lot of pressure on him, and that's been a problem that Oklahoma's had or something they're concerned about in terms of the outside rush against their tackles. Well, that'll confuse a quarterback when you get a big outside backer <laughs> putting a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> Oklahoma, <laughs> Oklahoma, one of five in third down situations. They've got it third and 14. And they're coming hard again at Gundy. Inside the 40. And Gundy exposed himself that time. Brian Williams made the initial hit, but Stefan Pace came up to give him that last pop. And so the University of Oklahoma stifled again, and that'll set up another punting situation. This will be their fifth punt so far in this game with 6.31 to go, first half, as Brad Riddell with the wind to his back and kicking from the 47-yard line to try to angle this and get it inside the 20. Was it caught in the air? They couldn't handle it. It goes into the end zone. Nearly done very well down there. 39 yards on the punt. No score here from Norman. No. No, no, no. 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 Uh, Gary Gibbs, who uh, Lynn Swan played against when uh, SC and Southern Cal hooked up in the early 70s, was a defensive uh, coordinator here. A linebacker who yeah. wore number 41. I asked him, I said, did you tackle me during that game? He goes, no, no, I, I think I was just like on the sidelines, just kind of watching most of that game. He said Rod showed he me said, all the tackles. Yeah, he said Rod showed me the tackles. I got in late, but USC didn't come after me. First and 10 from the 20. Wide open. The tight end, Bradford Banta. First down, Southern Cal. He's still going. He's still going over the 40 to the 43 yard line. Manta 6'6, 245 pounds. He only had one catch last year. A good technician. But right here going against zone coverage and good protection. And this comes about because of great play action there. The run's been working well. He just lobs one over Rob Johnson to his big tight end and just watch him bull his way downfield. That's He's not down. That's four. That's, That's five. five. That's six. That's seven. That's and eight. Oh. And a couple of Trojans, what too. A, what a way to go there. Bannon. Creighton up the middle. He gets nothing. On a first down from the 43-yard line, Cedric Jones made the stop. And coming up next on ABC Sports, Coach Lou Holtz and the seventh-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame have a point to prove. They head to East Lansing to take on the Michigan State Spartans. That's live next on ABC Sports as uh, the Irish try to rebound from that tie against Michigan. And, of course, Michigan State lost to Central Michigan last week. Southern Cal on second and ten will send trips to the near side. 5.17 to go. Johnson throws it near side, and he has got Johnny Morton. Across midfield and close to a first down at the 47-yard line, Darius Johnson makes the tackle. When you take a look at this, we've got trips. You've got one, two, three to the left side. The whole defense is spread out. You see the gaps here. Now, these guys are going to go downfield, allowing the receiver to come in underneath that zone coverage. You see him right there. Now, if nobody backs up, he makes that cut a little bit shorter, a little more shallow. In our uh, ongoing uh, weekly uh, idol list, Johnny Morton lists Lynn Swan as his idol. Yeah, he says he was the one who inspired me to be a receiver, and he led the Trojans in receiving last year. What can you say? Looks like they made their first down. He did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he came to USC, he didn't know that I had actually gone to USC. He just happened to go uh, to Southern Cal, and, and it's been reported and said several times. It, it, it's, it's a compliment. It makes you feel good that uh, what you're doing in life is, is being observed and people have respect for it. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Makes first, me feel good and old. First down and 10. You're just getting better. Timeout down on the field with 5.08 to go. First half. Timeout. 
against Southern Cal. And we'll be back to Norman, Oklahoma right after this. Johnson, sophomore quarterback. Uh, his junior year in high school, he wasn't good enough to be the starter because a kid named Stenstrom was playing up at Stanford was the starting quarterback, so he was a receiver. He wanted to play, so he gets out in the football field. He plays when he can. Do you recall when uh, USC uh, shut out Oklahoma in 1982? We go to the time capsule. They break a streak of 181 games as we rewind it back. Also that year, Penn State went 11-1 on their way to the national championship. The only loss to Alabama. Michael Jordan hit the game winner as North Carolina beat Georgetown in the game that Freddie Brown threw the ball away. And St. Louis beat Milwaukee to win the World Series. Joaquin Andujar won the seventh game. So that's back in 1982. As we're here in 92, first and 10. Hand off. Loose ball. Loose ball. Creighton was the ball carrier. Barnes made the stick. And now they've got to unpile him and see who's got it. Oklahoma. Well, the officials haven't said anything yet. Well, one has. Yeah, there's one done. guy out there giving it this. Well, is, he, is he the big eight uh, referee official or is he a pack well, We're guy? not going to start that, are we? <laughs> no, we're not. Beavers oh, made the recovery. That's Reggie Barnes. Real intense play. See him at the bottom of the screen. No watch here. As he comes in, makes the hit. But the ball was actually stripped loose by another player coming in from the other side. Looked like Beavers might have been the guy that stripped it, and then Barnes got to him right after that. Nonetheless... That's a tough tandem. Nonetheless, Oklahoma has it. At the 47-yard line with 5.02 to go, first half, first and 10. This Oklahoma offense has been stifled by the Southern Cal defense so far today. Williams off the left side. Gets just a couple, not much room there, as uh, Mike Hens, number 96, a junior from Riverside, California, was in on the stop. Last week when Oklahoma played Arkansas State, the starters played four series, they scored each time, and then the backup players came in. Southern California had a bye. They had a 50-play scrimmage. All the second and third team guys play, participated in the scrimmage. Because of the competition of Arkansas State, basically both teams did the same thing, except for Oklahoma did it against strangers in the full house. <laughs> there you go. Second down and nine. Gundy. Intended receiver Albert Hall. And a nice job by John Herpin on the coverage. Let's go to Dean Wooden. Dean? Injury update, guys. USC in good shape. Oklahoma's center, number 78, J.R. Conrad, came off you saw a while ago. He's fine, though, a twisted ankle. He's a key player on Oklahoma's offensive line. The guy is a true freshman, and it was only 10 days before the season opener. They moved him from offensive tackle to center. And Lynn, as you know, and Roger, that's a tough transition. He is a dynamite player. Could be an All-American real soon. Thanks, Dean. Third down and nine, and Oklahoma one of six on third down situations from their own 48-yard line. 421 to go, first half from Norman. And Gundy looking things over calls a timeout as they are having some problems dissecting the Southern Cal defense. And we'll be back right after this. Saw so right there in the middle of the huddle J.R. Conrad, the uh, freshman starting center. And uh, as Dean Blevins mentioned, twisted ankle. He is back into the game right now on a third down and nine with 421 to go. First half, no score. Oklahoma and Southern Cal. And uh, Cale Gundy has just not been able to, uh, and he's going to call timeout again. Yep. Lynn, what, what exactly is Southern Cal doing that's causing Gundy these problems? Well, when they come out and they line up as soon as the huddle breaks, the defensive unit comes to the line and they're set. Gundy's looking over it, and apparently he's calling a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage. He did this from the beginning of the ball game. And then they are shifting. We'll take a look at it right here. Now watch these guys. So this ball, they're setting up. Now watch him. He looks over the defense trying to get a read. He's about to take the snap. Now they shift again. Now this causes problems if you don't have the right blocking assignments. And as we sa said, it's a young line. Now he's confused. He says, all right, now they look like they're going to do something else. If I call this play, it's not going to work. I'm going to get sacked. You know, we don't have our strength going at their weakness or strength to strength. We've got something they've do they're doing in terms of alignment that's going to attack a weakness in the play we have called. So you get out of it. Tonight on uh, ABC Action and Adventure from a new time and place, the premiere of Covington Cross at its regular night and time. And then Clint Eastwood stalks a serial killer as usual in tightrope. That's a Saturday night movie on ABC, and uh, we'll be home to see that. <laughs> Early kickoff here. You may. <laughs> I, I know I will.
Gundy's missed four of his last five passes. When you've got a situation like this, what I would suggest is that you call a play that you know will work, whether it's against a zone, a man-to-man, -man, against any defense, and just execute it. Double tight ends with both Joey Mickey and Pete Schmidt in there. Gundy got some time, got his receiver, Albert Hall. Enough for the first down at the 40-yard line. John Herpin made the stop, and I think that's a good point you just made. made. Lynn, just do it. You know you know what you got to do. Just execute. And what they did as we watch Hall make this catch is that they only sent two receivers out on the pass pattern. And he runs your basic out, almost like a hook out. And they kept everyone else in to block because I'm sure they were having problems deciding how many people USC was bringing and from what direction. So they kept everyone and just sent the two wide receivers. And they've been going to Herpin's side a lot today as the clock now under four minutes, first and ten from the 40-yard line. Gundy got his guy over there on the far side. Corey Warren inside the 30 should be another first down. Jason Oliver and Stephon Pace make the stop. Take a look at this. The USC cornerback Jason Oliver is giving him a lot of room. Corey Warren has a lot of room to work with. So he runs a quick route and the ball is thrown before Stephon Pace, the safety, can get over and make the play. So would you like to see those corners up tighter? The, the corners are going to have to come up a little bit tighter or else Oklahoma can nickel and dime them all the way down the field. This is the farthest Oklahoma's been in Southern Cal territory on first and 10 from the 29-yard line. A gain of about three on that play. Thomas Holland, the nose guard, and Jeff Kopp, the uh, linebacker, come up to make the stop on Duell Brewer, the senior from Lawton, Oklahoma. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Obviously, Gundy has been confused a couple of times. He called two consecutive timeouts. The Sooners have talked about it, and they will probably go to a quicker snap count to try to uh, keep USC from switching so late in the, uh, in the play. Second down and seven at the 26. Rashid, the lone setback, and he is met immediately. He went nowhere as Jeff Kopp came busting through to make the stop. Loss of three. Well, well Dean, Dean, I think you're correct, but part of the problem is that when the man makes the right shift, just as you snap the ball, now here's a man who's going to shift right over here and then zip and make the stop in the backfield before the back gets any speed. There he goes, right there. No one blocks him because he moved out of the assignment area. That'll bring up another third down situation for Oklahoma. Third and ten at the 29-yard line. At least the Sooners uh, have gotten themselves... Uh, in field goal range here with 2.15 the clock running. If in fact this play doesn't work, trips to the near side for the Sooners. All right, Southern Cal, that's about the third time they've jumped off today. They're anxious to put pressure on the quarterback. Kel Gundy, as a leader, has to use his voice. Dead ball, encroachment, defense, five yard penalty, repeat third down. To draw them off sides a little bit. Uh, just offsides. If they don't make contact, they of course can snap the ball. It will still be offsides against the defense. Now, some people are saying that uh, we talked about uh, Southern Cal's schedule uh, this year. Some people are saying that it might be the toughest schedule in the nation. Uh, they play uh, seven bowl teams from a year ago. This thing has been a battle so far on third and five now from the 24-yard line. Once again, Southern Cal a little too anxious. Rashid looks like they're just setting up to go for the field goal. They gave it to Rashid to get to the middle. Mike Salmon, the uh, strong safety, moved to uh, an outside backer, number 24. One of the players in on the tackle, along with Jeff Kahn. Well, this is where your coaching staff comes into play in terms of making tactical decisions. We've got a minute and 25 seconds in this half counting down. No team has been able to move the ball the length of the field. What you want to do is come away with a with a win here. Now, a field goal gives you three points. You've got the lead in this ball game because no one scored yet. Scott Blanton to attempt it. Last year, he was 4 of 12. This from 42 yards out. Ripped the wind, and he got it. Scott Blanton, the sophomore who last year did not make one over 40 yards, nails the 42-yarder with the win. And the Sooners get on the board first, 3-0. You know, I asked Coach Gibbs about his kicker because he had tried some from 50 yards several times, 
although he'd missed him. And, and, and Gary said, well, you know, the, the goal pulls are tied there now. And I'm not quite sure. But I asked him about a situation like this. Coming down to the end of the half, your offense is not going to move the ball in for a touchdown. You don't think you're giving the other team too much time to come back at you with a quick score. Would you let this kid come out and try one 40, 45, 50 yards? He goes, in those circumstances, yes, I would. Because we've got nothing to lose. He's got the leg, but we're just concerned about the accuracy. And that time, Blatton comes through with both the distance and the accuracy for the three points in the lead. Well, the uh, Southern Cal Trojans had a drive earlier, 12 plays, and the field goal attempt was blocked. And so this drive put together by the Sooners, resulting in the three points, eight plays, 18 yards, 357, and Blanton the 42-yarder. As he gets set to uh, kick it off, Curtis Conway, one of the deep men, along with Estrus Creighton, Creighton 23 and Conway number three. Conway's got the most kickoff returns in Southern Cal history, 46. Last year he had a couple of return for touchdowns, but they were called back. So he is a threat. And they're going to kick it. Creighton's going to get it. And they're going to say, come on out. And Creighton is stopped at the 10 yard line. Maybe not such a good idea. Jermaine Green is down to make the tackle. And coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from action across the country. I have a special report on the man behind the quest for the Heisman Trophy, Marshall Falk, Marianne Grambler will bring you that. And Keith Jackson, Bo Beckler, and John will all discuss the Notre Dame-Michigan game. Michigan State, excuse me. Michigan was that. Well, they might discuss that, that too. Tie, from from that last week. Last yeah. week that, uh, they Lou might Holtz, have something to say about that. Lou Holtz had problems with talking about his two running yeah. plays at the end of the game as opposed to going for a pass and a score. Handoff up the middle. Creighton to the outside, and he is hit by William Schenkel. Creighton, a gain of about eight yards as the clock now below a minute. And Southern Cal, are you going to let this thing run out, man? you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. You don't want a mistake here. Uh, turn the ball over and give Oklahoma another chance at a field goal late in, the, late in this half. Creighton did a good job running that time. You know, you get an handoff, inside handoff, you may be thinking about, well, run out of bounds. No, run straight down the middle of the field. Everybody's protecting the boundaries now. Southern Cal with two timeouts left, so uh, we'll just let this clock continue to run. Creighton up the middle. It'll be close to a first down, which will uh, stop the clock. 20 seconds to go. Estrus Creighton. 6'2", 190, senior from Huntington Beach. Uh, will we ever see that great tradition of tailbacks come to Southern Cal again? Sure, if they get one. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's just great. You got Marshall Falk, it would be there, I right? mean, sure, if Marshall Falk had enrolled at USC, believe me, <laughs> they'd be running the ball 30, 35 times a game. And if he was at Oklahoma, they'd be running the wishbone, right? You, you're darn right. Now, Johnson's going to throw it. Comes near side, pass intended over there for Curtis Conway. So little change of heart there, uh, Lynn. And I don't understand the purpose of it. Uh, you know, there's four seconds left in this half. Uh, short pass like that to the sideline stops the clock, but you're still not even across the 40-yard line if it's complete. Larry Smith, uh, boy, it's been a tough couple of years for him and uh, still looking for his first victory over Notre Dame. And he is focused on just pushing this team and getting the best out of them. So he's been coaching for a long time. He's only had two losing seasons in all the years that he's been coaching. So... Arizona he's before USC, Tulane before that. He's very uncomfortable with this situation. And they'll hand it off up the middle. That's uh, backup fullback Mike Mooney, number 30. Got some yardage there, and that ends the first half from Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners with the field goal right before halftime lead Southern Cal 3-0. Potential halftime reports coming up next. September, Saturday afternoon, and uh, this was Cole Ford, first quarter, win, very close on this field goal. And they tried to get three points on the board. You see it, the ball's going to come through, and it's angling from left to right, but just may have missed it by an inch. Of course, the official underneath with the, uh, the good look at it, and then this is the second quarter. They came back, and you watch this man right here. Number nine is Tink Owens. He's going to come in. And Tick Collins, excuse me, and come right through here, jump in the air. He's not going to be blocked. Roy Brown, number 42, should get a piece of him right here. He goes up in the air and blocks Cole Ford's kick. And we are set to go. Second half, Oklahoma will kick it off. Blanton to kick it off. The uh, Sooners with the wind to their back here. 
And that's going to be a real deep kick out of the end zone. And Southern Cal will have it first and 10 from the 20 yard line. And these are the numbers from the first half. And as you look at the numbers, you see USC having the edge both in time and total yards, moving the ball a little bit on the run, a little bit in the pass, but they have one turnover. It's just been a matter of field position. Two missed field goals by USC and one made by Oklahoma. Difference in the ball game. The Oklahoma defense trying to get this uh, crowd around. All honesty, an 11 a.m. kickoff. Talking to some of the people here at Oklahoma, they say this might be the earliest kickoff ever in the history of Oklahoma football. So now as we approach uh, all about 10 to 1 Central Time, now this crowd's starting to get into it as Johnson rolls out. Going to keep it, and he's run out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Aubrey Beavers, the junior from Houston, Texas, one of the men there on the tackle. After that first half, I think USC has to come back and say, okay, we've had some success. We're pounding the ball inside on the run. Now we can come out, run our play action, get a little bit more time, and work the ball down the field. So I think we're going to see more of that, and then maybe USC going, working to the outside a little bit in the run. To the near side for Southern Cal, Larry Wallace and Curtis Conway on second and nine. The play stopped at the 22-yard line. Dwight McFadden, the redshirt freshman from Lawton, Oklahoma, hit by William Shankle and Darius Johnson. So McFadden, the younger who was recruit youngster, recruited out of Oklahoma by Southern Cal, his first action of the day. And Lawton is not that far from here. It's a draw. He goes up inside. And, and see, the outside opens up real big for him. But he's got to get outside. And then once he gets to the outside, turn it back upfield for the yardage. The Oklahoma defense just kept stringing him out for no yardage. Third down and eight, USC, three of seven. Third down situation, just underway, second half. Johnson, gonna scramble now. Able to elude a tackler, he's close to the first down. Let's see where he gets the spot. It looks to be a, a favorable spot for Southern Cal across the 30 to the 32 yard line. What Rob Johnson did then, knowing he doesn't have that great speed, he got to the outside. He's being chased to the outside by Mike Coates, number 41. But well, watch his head and watch what he's looking at. He's looking at the marker on the other side of the field for the first down. And then he just dives for it right there to pick up the first down. Nice job there by the sophomore from Mission Viejo. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. McFadden looking for room to the outside, and he is stuck. Reggie Barnes was right there, the first man to greet him. USC, their offensive leaders in the first half. Johnson, 10 of 14, 92 yards. Creighton, 16 carries, 53 yards. And then Conway with five receptions to lead the way. Not a great deal of yardage on, on those catches, being controlled by that secondary. And this, as we stated early in the ballgame on the Oklahoma checklist, one of the things they had there was to control Morton and Conway. And so far, they've been doing just that. This time, West Bender, 45, is the deep back on second and 10. Johnson. Picked off, picked off, Terry Collier, touchdown. <laughs> Penalty marker is down at the 18-yard line. Penalty marker down at the 18-yard line. It was after the interception on the run back. Take a look at this play. From the outside, Aubrey Beavers, 56, comes in. He is not blocked very well by Wes Bender. He puts the pressure on Johnson, causes the bad throw. And there you saw the clip. So that uh, interception return for the touchdown nullified, that would have been the third in three games for Oklahoma. McFadden, the that, youngster from Lawton, Oklahoma, giving chase, and then here's the, uh, the clip right here. 
Yes, it's close. Yeah, McFadden but, but he still, turned his shoulder a little bit. He turns his shoulder a little bit, and the official just called him. Beavers was the man that uh, came across and uh, got a piece of him. That's, I probably would, probably would not have called that. There, well, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't call from <laughs> up here. We just kind of let him play on. But take a look at it. I mean, McFadden's giving chase, and as you said, watch him just kind of turn his shoulders. Now, if he had been hit from behind right there by William Shankle, number eight, who's giving chase, I'd say that'd be a big clip. But right there, he just kind of turns his back and goes with the flow of that and then creates the clip. Good move if he did it on purpose. In the last 11 Oklahoma victories, Lynn, they've returned six interceptions for touchdowns. This would have been a seventh and ninth and one, so that has been a big part. You talk about, you know, defense special teams coming up. I mean, that is so huge when the defense can do that. They've had two already this year. Oklahoma. First and ten from the 28 yard line. Williams, the lone back, he's got it. Around the left side, a little bit penalty marker down. Williams turns it for inside the 15, down to the 13 yard line. Well, a penalty marker is at the 32 yard line, and there is a, a shoe loose on the ground, too, at the 27. Because I was holding a foot. <laughs> Just got the shoe. And it's holding against Oklahoma. So two big penalties against the Sooners. One on the interception return, and now on their first play after that interception. Remember, against San Diego State in the third quarter, it's been holding. Offense, 10 yards, spot foul. Repeat first down. It was in the third quarter that USC had a mental lapse in the ball game, allowing San Diego State to score 17 points, get right back in the ball game, and take a lead. And this is what... Larry Smith meant about at the beginning of the ball game in my checklist saying he wanted four quarters of intense football. He didn't want them to just settle back and do nothing in the third quarter. He wanted all four quarters to be tough football. The sun starting to try and break through here on the overcast day in Norman, Oklahoma, as the uh, interception by the Sooners gave him good field position. After the penalty nullified the touchdown, and then now a penalty on their first play on the ensuing possession. So it'll be first down and 19 as the ball has been moved back to the 37-yard line. Let me just make a correction. That third quarter against San Diego State, San Diego, San Diego State scored 24 points against USC. Yeah, USC was leading 21 to 7 at halftime. 12.47 to go, third quarter. Williams is the lone setback for Cale Gundy. Oklahoma Sooners. Near side, reception there by T. Collins, breaks one tackle, gets to the 25. The first man there was John Herpin, and it was Brian Williams who came over to make the stop. As we take a look at the offensive leaders for Oklahoma, Gundy 7 of 15, but the rushing man, Williams 3 of 11, Rashid with the bruised ribs, and then the receptions Warren and Hall each have two. And you see he has, Gundy is under 50% in terms of passing against Texas Tech in the first quarter. I think he was 9 for 9, over 80% at the end of that game. Yeah, game. completed 12 in a row altogether, a new Oklahoma record in that game against Tech. Second down and 7 from the 25. Well, Brewer, running back, is split out to the far side. The intended receiver, Albert Hall, and Cale Gundy was nailed. 44 was the man that came busting through. That is David Webb. Now you see Hall going up against number 23, John Herpin. He gets a good outside release here. He's downfield. Now he really hasn't beat if the ball is right on the mark. And it's just outside the reach. Now, Webb is going to break through number 44, David Webb, to get a stick on him right there. And just briefly, you saw number 9, Stefan Pace. He was coming in the blitz and hesitated. He could have been there for a sack. Third down at 7. Oklahoma was late getting their 11th player on the field. As Gundy sends it to the end zone. Touchdown. Corey Warren. 25 yards on the touchdown pass. As Gundy just threw it up in the air. And Warren won the battle for the football. I mentioned there was one player late coming onto the field. And that's Corey Warren. <laughs> number two, he gets in the slot. Then you see number four, Jason Oliver switching off on him, going over, and he beats him for the touchdown. 
I don't think that was by design, but then again, you never know. I, it, it, you know it, it can't be by design because it's illegal <laughs> for them to do that. Glenn to attempt the point after, and it's good. So the interception leads to the Oklahoma touchdown. They lead it 10 nothing. Biggest play of the game so far is number two. Corey Warren goes up in the air and makes a big grab against number four, Jason Oliver, who was a victim of another great catch two weeks ago against San Diego State when Darnay Scott came over the top and just took one away from him. And right now, I'm sure he's feeling a little upset. These guys have kind of made the big plays on him, but no one's really picking him. Warren, three interceptions, 46 yards in his first touchdown. Oklahoma with 11.48 to go, third quarter, leading Southern Cal, 10-0, the uh, Sooners, who a year ago ranked 12th in the nation in total defense, lost eight defensive starters, they got a bunch of youngsters playing on defense, and after a little bit of a shaky start, because Rob Johnson had a nice drive early in the game that didn't produce any points, this Oklahoma defense has come back up, made the big play that resulted in the TD. USC has now given up 21 points in their two ball games after a turnover. Johnson, 10 of 15, the uh, one interception will hand it to uh, McFadden Harlan to the 23-yard line where Terry Collier, the freshman from Monday, Texas, and Reggie Barnes, the senior, out of Grand Prairie, Texas. And, of course, the Sooners have done such a terrific job through the years of recruiting the state of Texas. And Southern Cal has done a great job of going all across the country, and that's how they uh, got Dwight McFadden, who really never seriously considered Oklahoma. At that time, there were sanctions against the Sooners. And... He went out to Southern Cal. He's getting some playing time here today. About oh, 40 or 50 people on hand uh, from his family and close friends watching. And McFadden's got some room to the outside. Breaks one tackle. First down across the 30. And still going as McFadden gets to the 33-yard line for the University of Southern California. Darnell Walker finally makes the tackle. Tony Baselli, number 71. On the offensive line for USC did a great job driving down the field, driving his man down the field, creating the hole for McFadden. First down attempt from the 33-yard line as Joel Scott and Curtis Conway split to the near side. 10.58 to go third quarter. Play action, Johnson will roll near side. He's got some pressure, he's able to get it away, but the pass intended for Banta is overthrown. And joining me right now... Uh, in a broadcast position, a uh, man that uh, had coached many years here at the University of Oklahoma, national title, of course, in uh, 85. Barry Switzer, and Barry, I know besides uh, playing some golf, you're, you're keeping your hand busy in television a little bit here locally. Well, I do a show called Switzer and Company with Dean Blevins, local channel 5 here, ABC affiliate, yeah. and uh, I've done that for a couple of years. I do a lot of different things, but I don't play golf, Roger, I promise <laughs> you. That, I've always said that should be what they make convicts do. 36 <laughs> holes a day, carry a bag, and a ball, and chain. That's an inhumane punishment, promise you. We'll get back to you in just a moment. Second down and ten. Going near side, Travis Hammond. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. William Shankle with no attack. Gary, uh, any interest, any desire to get back into coaching? You know, I, I when I resigned three years ago, I said I'd never coach again, Roger. I meant that. Uh, the Arkansas job opened this year. I had 30 phone calls <laughs> from all over the country. Am I going to take the job? No, Frank, I told him years ago, Boyles will pick the right guy. It's a great job, but it's not the job for Barry Switzer. I said, Tyson doesn't have enough chickens. He's got a lot of chickens. <laughs> I'm not going to get back and coach him. Third down and one. I, I know you can hardly believe this passing game that Oklahoma has here now. That's a Southern Cal. Will uh, send it right up the middle of the crowd that's got the first down. But just one more thing. I mean, can you, does it seem like Oklahoma football without the wishbone or well, that option? Well, you know, I walked over to the pub at the half, you know, a little bar yeah. over here, and, and people were saying, Coach, run the option, run the option. I said, Hell, back when I ran the option, you want me to throw the football. <laughs> you can't ever satisfy these people. You know that, right? I know. It. Very just good. Just win. Just win. Good seeing you. Good seeing okay. you. Okay. Glad, glad to have you up good here with you. us. And there's a number 15. Who's that down the sideline? play last week you're talking about emotional yep. moment because he's been raised on that field from a little pup. Barry thanks a lot we get back to action here on a first and ten from the uh, 45 yard line as uh, Southern Cal trying to put something together McFadden getting a lot of time here and you know he didn't even uh, he didn't even bust Lynn Swan uh, oh, well, while we had it. You know I'm so glad you know he was here because I wanted to I wanted to punch him for, <laughs> for stopping me in 1973 when they came out there I, was, I had that defensive back set him up and we were number one and 
I was setting him up for the deep pass, and he stuck in Tony Peters. Fresh legs. I couldn't get by the guy. Well, that was just good coaching, I think. <laughs> Second down and eight from the 47-yard line. McFadden, six carries, 19 yards. And movement up front. The Oklahoma's Joe Correa jumped first. He was trying to get back, and then Craig Gibson, the center, uh, went ahead and snapped the ball and shot out, so we'll see who that uh, penalty is going to be on. Uh, as, uh, the official will come over. Encroachment, defense, five yard penalty. You recall, Roger, in the first half, I thought that USC should be doing that. And I think as you look at that play, and, and, and remember how the, how the line just stayed right there in, the, in, their, in their stands, and the center snaps the ball, he must have been told by the coach at halftime, if you call a signal and the guy jumps off his own neutral zone, snap the ball. Get the five yards, because USC gave up about 10 yards in a similar situation to allow Oklahoma kick a field goal in the first half. Craig Gibson, uh, 61, the center. Great uh, tradition for his family. Uh, in football's little Don, Pac-10 player at Southern Cal, his brother Boomer in Arizona, where he's been. His dad was a teammate of where he's an Army back in 1957. On a second and three, Johnson checking off at the line of scrimmage. At that time, Johnson had a little bit of time, maybe would have been wise to get rid of the football. Aubrey Fever is also in on the pressure. I'll tell you, he had a lot of time. Take a look, though. Downfield, number three is Conway. He's trying to get the ball. And look, and look right there. There's contact with Larry Wallace, number one, as they screen him off from coming on the inside. That sets up a third down and 12. It's two sacks now for 17 yards. It's Johnson in the pressure zone again. Gets rid of it. Oh, the crack is stuck. Trying to call it an incomplete pass, but Shankle, the man who came up to put the stick on the cut. This Oklahoma defense is really fired up, and they got the crowd into the game. Oklahoma has been playing patience for ball. They've been stopped in the first half by Southern Cal, but just stay right with them. Here they get the good pressure on the screen. They actually flush the quarterback before he's able to throw the ball. That gives the secondary a chance, a chance to see what he's trying to do. Then they can come off those receivers, and that's exactly what Schenkel did. He came off his receiver, came up with a big stick on McFadden. The... Uh Officials now try to uh, set the ball correctly. A little bit of confusion. So they'll set it back at the 43-yard uh, line on the incomplete pass. And with 8.28 to go, third quarter, John Stonehouse, the freshman, inside his 30, will punt it down to L. Brewer. The senior back at the 20-yard line. Now, this will be into the wind. High snap. Pretty good kick, though. Real good kick. Brewer inside the 10. Brewer is stopped right at the 10-yard line. For Southern Cal, it was Don Cunningham, number 37. 48-yard punt by the true freshman, John Stonehouse, out of Pasadena. Number two, Oklahoma, was seconds away from defeating number one, USC. Here's Keith Jackson. Nine seconds to play. Third down. This may be it. Hazer. He's open. Running for the corner. Throws it. Touchdown. And Cornwell, he himself. Well, just a, a side note, USC finished 9-3 and three that year, losing to Arizona, Washington, and Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl after that. We saw Barry Switzer, mm -hmm. the coach of that Oklahoma team. John Robinson is here calling the game. For prime ticket. For prime ticket also. Now a gain of about five on that play on a first and ten from the 11. Uh, Pace and Cop in on the tackle. Duell Brewer, senior from Watton, Oklahoma, averaging over five yards a carry. Neither one of these teams is able to move the ball consistently all the way down the field. USC stopped, having been stopped short, going for 40 yard plus field goals. Oklahoma scores, but only after a turnover, only after getting an exceptional field position. USC's defense has got to give their offense some great field position to have a chance in this ball game. Second and six. Quick toss to the outside, Brewer, the intended receiver. If you think because Cale Gundy's here, and they obviously are passing more than they did with the wishbone, 
they've forgotten about the run. They haven't. Uh, Gary Gibson and staff signed three high school All-American running backs uh, this past year. Two of them, uh, Jeff Frazier and Dwayne Chandler, are playing, and, and Mike Thompson the third is being redshirted. So they haven't forgotten about the run. No, they haven't forgotten the run. Any team that throws the football really wants balance, but they want the ability to win the game in the air. A great running attack allows a team not to be able to defensively just stack their defense against one aspect of the game. Third down and six from the 15-yard line. Hand off, inside, number 23, the uh, ball carrier there, Duell Brewer, and not enough for the first down. Let's go to John Saunders in New York, John. Again in Penn State, no matchup here. Quasi Ramsey looking for his own man, but he finds Shelly Hammond of Penn State. 32 yards in the interception for the touchdown. 31 nothing. Roger. Thanks, John. Fourth down and two as Brad Riddell at his five with the wind to his back. Another end over end kick. Curtis Conway's going to have a chance from the 35 on this one. Conway still on his feet. Conway, did he step out of bounds? Yes, they say he did at the 49 yard line. Come back, Curtis. Come back. Curtis Conway must have seen that clip on television last night of Joe Washington from years ago. <laughs> and speaking, here it is. Here's Conway. It looks like they have a middle return. He's just bouncing off people. And again, he's got the speed to do this. He gets the sideline, tries to make it, but he steps out of bounds, so he has to come back. USC still trails by 10 in the third quarter. Not to cheer about right now because the Sooners lead the Trojans 10 0, third quarter, 651 to go. As McFadden, a redshirt freshman from nearby Lawton, Oklahoma, gets about three. And let's go to Dean Blevins. Guys, one of the reasons Oklahoma has passed so well this season is they finally have a full time receivers coach. He's Clarence James. Let's get a shot of him over here. He was at the University of Texas, and Gibbs brought him aboard. Nine different receivers caught passes in the first half of the Texas Tech game. In fact, 12 Sooners have caught passes this year. A lot of the credit goes to him. Okay, and. Thanks, we, had him, we had him there for a second. Yeah, there, were, there was uh, Clarence. You know, it was interesting. When they ran the wishbone, they didn't have a receivers coach. They had a graduate assistant because they only had one or two receivers. And Clarence is their first receivers coach here. As Johnson's in trouble. And he is stuffed by Aubrey Beavers, his fourth sack of the year. Beavers, academically ineligible in 1991. Part of 1990, anxious to get back. He is learning on the job. Watch him call the right side of your screen. He hesitates a little bit. He's still got the football, so he just comes after him. He didn't have to charge very hard because he was unblocked from the backside. Aubrey Beavers came into this game with 10 tackles, three sacks, two forced fumbles, an interception for a touchdown. He is a guy that can do a lot of different things for you, and Gary Gibbs says he'll make a lot of big plays here. He's still a little bit raw because he hasn't played the last few years. On a third and 12, Johnson is in trouble, and Beavers was the man one more time. Mike Coates, also number 41. He'll come in, and they'll get credit for a half sack each. So the Oklahoma defense has come to life in the third quarter. Aubrey Beavers, the outside pressure, McFadden not being able to handle him. And the presence of Bieber makes Johnson recoil or recall that pass. And that forces SC into a bunning situation on fourth down and 20 as Stonehouse standing at his 25 and Duell Brewer back at the 23 yard line. There were some Sooners in there and close on that punt as the fair catch called by Brewer. And I want to remind you, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 22nd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the scholarship fund of each school. That's coming up later. 10-0, Oklahoma. 4.44 to go. Third quarter. It's been the defense for the Sooners. It's gotten the job done today. The offense has been stifled to a great extent as Cale Gundy has him first and 10 from the 24-yard line. Quick toss near side, Corey Warren. And Warren up to the 34-yard line, short of the first down. John Herpin and Jason Seahorn. Lynn, what are they seeing on that side of the field? I mean, that seems to be where they're going, at least having their success. USC is sprinkling man coverage with 
zone coverage and what they're getting now when they come up to the line of scrimmage. They're taking a look and they're seeing the zone coverage on the corners and the corners are giving them a large cushion. They're giving them eight, nine, ten yards on the cushion. That means the receiver comes off, stops at five, it's a quick pass. Then if he breaks a tackle, he can make six or ten or so yards or more. The ball carrier is number 20, Ernest Williams. And Jason Seahorn, the uh, junior college transfer from Shasta up in Northern California, who got the start today, came up to make the stop on Williams right there, the leading rusher for the uh, Sooners of Oklahoma. The offense of UC USC really has to come together. You see them there on the sideline being talked to, I should say, being lectured to. First down and 10 at the 35-yard line. They're trying to get the, uh, the offensive line and the backs coordinated when uh, Oklahoma's blitzed, and that handoff goes nowhere to Kenyon Rashid as busting in from the outside was number 24, Mike Salmon, the junior out of Phoenix, Arizona. Of course, Mike Salmon started that strong safety last week, started this game in an outside linebacker position. That's where he is right now coming in on that blitz. He's had six interceptions over the last couple of years. His brother uh, plays with the California Angels. Came up, got called up from minor leagues this summer, Tim. And just uh, about a week or so before uh, SC's first game in San Diego State for this first major league no, home that's run. Great. Second down and 11. Oh, what a stick right there. The intended receiver for Oklahoma, P.J. Mills. And he was sandwiched as the ball was thrown high and he was exposed and the big hit was made by Brian Williams. And they told us a lot of things about P.J. Mills. He's only 5'11", 172 pounds and he's going to get some experience here. He's going to get an education he won't forget on that play. That was John Herpin who was holding on to him at the, at the cornerback and the linebacker Brian Williams came in and tattooed him. I think there's a little Trojan emblem now on his chest. No doubt about it. Third down and 11. 3.28 to go, third quarter. Gundy coming to the side. Pass completed. Oh, my Team goodness. Team Collins made the catch. There was some question for a moment whether he had possession. Question of maybe whether he was in bounds, but it's going to be just shy of the first down. I looked at it as he was making the catch, and it looked like his left foot comes down on the line. We'll take a look at it. Right there, he goes up. And no, no he's inside. No Got that toe down inside, and the heel just kind of moved over to the outside. But obviously not being quite aware where the sticks were, and it's short of the first down, and so the punt by Riddell, and the fair catch by Conway back at the 20-yard line. And Oklahoma will have it first and 10 as we take a look at Nebraska and Washington. Big game tonight out in Seattle. Texas A&M and Missouri just underway in the first quarter in Columbia. Oklahoma State playing at Michigan, trailing 14 to nothing at halftime. Colorado and Minnesota tonight. Also in the Big 8 on this Saturday, Tulane and Iowa State just underway. Kansas State opens their season at home against Montana. The Kansas Jayhawks play not too far from here tonight over in Tulsa. The Jayhawks, the highest scoring team in the nation after the first two weeks of the season. First and 10. Johnson trying to get an inside screen work in Conway to the 26-yard line. Gain of six, and Reggie Barnes, number 40, came up to make the tackle. And that was the big play that USC used Conway on two weeks ago. They scored the first touchdown and then had scored a second touchdown, but it was called back. And obviously, the Oklahoma defense was set up and ready for that play. Estrus Creighton, number 23, is checked back in for Southern Cal on a uh, second down and three. They called that a seven-yard pickup on the last play. And Johnson going downfield. Conway's open at the 45, falls ahead to the 46-yard line. Let's go to New York and John Summers. John? Illinois and Houston, and Donald Douglas in now at quarterback. And he calls his own number. The fake, couple of nifty moves, and fights his way to the end zone. Six yards, culminating the 67-yard drive. 16-7 in Houston. Roger. Thanks, John. So the uh, body in the line, I getting off to a 2-0 start, having some problems uh, with the Cougars. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. 2.23 to go, third quarter. They give it to McFadden. He gets about three very hard yards. 
a young man from Watton, Oklahoma. What a thrill it's got to be for him, Lynn, to come back in an area where he grew up and play. What for pressure. Second. Yeah, pressure too. <laughs> pressure. His, his mother, I, I was told, was trying to get a number of tickets. like 60, right? 60 <laughs> tickets for her and family and Good friends luck. to come see her little boy play. And, and uh, I think she got a few. I don't you know, think she got 60. There's Larry Smith, the, uh, the head coach with McFadden there. Second down and seven. Ball just shy of the midfield. Creighton the lone setback and Johnson checking off at the line of scrimmage. Fumbled snap and Johnson falls on it. Well, sometimes when you check off the line of scrimmage, uh, you know, we've talked about this before, Then the, uh, the change of the snap count or the snap count changes the same, you change the signal, and it, it, it can lead to a little bit of confusion. Well, sometimes it can. Sometimes if the quarterback isn't, it just kind of takes it for granted in terms of where he's putting his hands. Maybe he just doesn't get all the way under the center. You saw him come back, and as he called the audible, he pulled up his forehand hand with a fist, and you know, those things will happen. Third down and nine at the 47-yard line. Here comes Oklahoma, sending a lot of people, and the pass complete, but not near enough for the first down. The pass was complete to Curtis Conway, but Darnell Walker was right there as Conway now with a career-high eight catches in the game, but Walker leading the cheers. What's making this so successful is the fact that Oklahoma is getting great outside pressure from its outside linebackers. Barnes and Beavers just crashing in from the outside. They're getting a good defensive charge in the middle, but more holding ground. That means that Johnson's just got to get rid of that ball, and that secondary breaking on the ball as soon as he releases. Stonehouse at the 36-yard line on a fourth and five. And the fair catch being called at the 14 by Duell Brewer. And I want to remind you again, Monday Night Football here on ABC. It'll be the New York Giants going against the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field in Chicago. That's at 9 Eastern on ABC's Monday Night Football. Just 16 seconds left to go in the third quarter as the Sooner with the 10-0 lead and what... Oh, honestly, Lynn, I, I really thought this was going to be an aerial show today. Uh, from what we saw, USC coming off San Diego State and, of course, uh, Oklahoma in their first two games, this has been a real defensive battle. There's been an attempt to put the ball in the air, mm -hmm. but both teams really do want to throw the ball short most of the time and, and break the big run. And defensively, they've just been playing very tough football. 12 punts so far in the game on first and 10, and another quick out to the near side, making the reception Corey Warren across the 20 to the... 21-yard line, and that's a pass that Gundy has favored. We've not seen him throw many post patterns today. Everything's been to the sides. That's because he's playing smart football. The defense is giving it to him. That's what he's going to take. We'll return with more action between USC and Oklahoma. Option play. Next Saturday, ABC Sports will present these great games. San Diego State battles the UCLA Bruins. Houston heads north to tackle Big Ten Power Michigan. Ole Miss meets Georgia in an SEC clash. Or the Iowa Hawkeyes invade Colorado. With the option play, you have more choices than ever before. Contact your local cable company to find out what's available in your area. And order ABC's College Football Live next Saturday on Pay-Per-View. Welcome back here to uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Cale Gundy, the uh, junior quarterback from Midwest City, Oklahoma. His brother was a terrific quarterback at Oklahoma State. Matter of fact, the offensive coordinator, Larry Coker, coached his brother at Oklahoma State, coached Cale here. As we start the final 15 and the handoff up the middle to uh, Williams goes absolutely nowhere. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, it's a misty afternoon, real humid, and you can see from the field as it comes up, the ball would tend to get wet. We might see some turnovers before the afternoon's over. One other note defensively, guys, of course, Gary Gibbs, a great defensive coach, was almost hired from Oklahoma as a defensive coordinator by USC back in 1981. And Tom Hayes, who is now the defensive coordinator, coached at UCLA, and of course, of course Lynn, that played, uh, they played against uh, USC. Absolutely. So Hayes uh, of Oklahoma, very familiar with the uh, USC scheme of things. Third down and three at the 21-yard line. Gundy's hit from behind, and the ball is knocked loose. That was Mike Salmon, who has been coming all day from that spot, and nobody touched him that time. 
Mike Salmon loves to attack the ball. We'll take a look at the pressure here. He's number 24, just at the bottom of your screen, right corner. You see he comes, he's blocked there, but he goes around the block of Kenyon Rashid to put the pressure on Gundy, cause the bad throw. I said nobody touched him. They didn't touch him good enough. <laughs> Fourth down and three, and Riddell to punt it into the wind. Conway, and a good punt there as he takes it at the 32. Curtis Conway, near midfield. He's brought down by 46 there, Tremaine Green, 46 yards on the punt, 16 on the return by Curtis Conway. Third quarter stats for this ball game reflect the fact that USC has made a couple of areas. The turnover's right here. It resulted in scores for Oklahoma. And you see the time of possession there, 26 minutes to 18. You see the overwhelming number of yards more than Oklahoma. Well, field position tells that story. And the scoreboard, Oklahoma is paying little attention to what USC is doing in terms of gaining yards. They've got 10 points, USC not. First and 10 from the 49 out of the shotgun on first down. Johnson's got a man wide open. Conway, touchdown. 51 yards. Second touchdown reception this year for Curtis Conway. Fifth touchdown pass for Rob Johnson and William Shankle, the man beat. Look at Rob Johnson, number 11. Look at his head. Look where he's looking, right down the middle of the field. He's looking at the safety. Now at the last minute, he turns to the outside. That look draws the corner into the inside, allowing Conway to stay out there, create the cushion, and the easy touchdown. He walked into the end zone. Longest pass play this season in the second game for Southern Cal. With 13.58 to go, fourth quarter, Cole Ford. The point after, and it's good. A three-point football game here in Norman. Curtis Conway, nine receptions, 114 yards, both career highs. Kind of scoring drive. You always like huh? seven seconds. That's the big play that Larry Smith kept yeah. saying he wanted to have in this game plan for 1992 said he wanted to have more big plays this day than Oklahoma. That's his first one. I think he has to get a couple more in there before he takes the lead. Cole Ford to kick it off. Sent five out of the end zone against the San Diego State. This is a short kick right here. Fielded by uh, Williams. And he gets across the 25 to the 27-yard line as Scott Fields came down to make the stop. So now, after maintaining that 10-0 lead, how does the philosophy change here for Oklahoma when anything, uh, you know, they try to do differently now with this three-point ball game? Well, Oklahoma was just trying to nickel and dime the way in the third quarter to make some things happen. They got some breaks in terms of field position, so they came away with a touchdown and a 10-point lead uh, in that third quarter. Now they, they really need to do the same thing. They really need to move the ball down the field, force SC to go the long distance if they don't get a score. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. Still going to the outside, penalty mark, no, no. The intended receiver was Williams, Stephon Pace was on the coverage, and he went for the flag and then decided no. Now, when he goes in, in and cuts in front of the receiver like this, he's going for the ball, now watch him, he's going for it, but watch where the ball is at. Well, he also had his left hand on top of the yeah. guy's shoulder pushing him down. Okay. Now, if that was an uncatchable pass, it wouldn't be pass interference. Well, I've got to believe that was catchable. Uh, maybe it's hard to tell. The ball was pretty high and had a lot of pace on it. So the official reached for his flag. He saw the action. I think he made a decision that the receiver could not have caught that ball. Larry Smith says pace is his best all-around defensive player. Second and 10. 13.51 to go fourth quarter. Williams. And Oklahoma has tried to get the running game going. Jeff Kopp, 35, and Brian Williams, 5. Both came up to make the tackle. Scoring summary went like this. Scott Blanton got the 42-yard field goal just before halftime, and Oklahoma led 3-0. And then Corey Warren, the 25-yard touchdown reception after the interception. And Curtis Conway, 51 yards on his touchdown reception. And that's where it stands, 10-7, as Oklahoma has a third and eight. 
Gundy checking off at the line of scrimmage. In trouble, Gundy is down at the 20-yard line. First man to get him, David Webb. Willie McGinnis was also there, and now the Southern Cal defense asserts itself. Another man who was making key plays on the last two downs was number 35, Jeff Kopp, who came in there and got a piece of him, got, grabbed him around the ankles before Webb and McGinnis came in to finish him off. And for the ninth time today, Brad Riddell will punt it. He stands at his own five-yard line. Conway at the 42. Conway with a seam. Penalty marker down. Conway loses the football at the 35-yard line as number 10 for Oklahoma came down to make the tackle. They're going to Steve call a Collins. Clip. They're going to call a clip for blocking in the back by number 27, Micah Phillips, who's listed as a cornerback. He came down clearly, blocked him from behind on that play. Had a push in the back on return, 10-yard penalty, first down. So Micah Phillips, a true freshman. A true freshman makes a mental error in trying to make something happen there. SC would have had the ball with less than uh, 45 yards to go for a score. Now they're pushed back, and they will be on their own 37-yard line. First and 10 from the 37 yard line. Out of the shotgun. Rob Johnson, Southern Cal. They trail it by three. Johnson's got his receiver, Travis Hanna. That's enough for the first down at the 49 yard line. We'd like to welcome all of you from the Florida Tennessee game here to Owen Field, Norman, Oklahoma, along with Lynn Swan, Dean Blevins down on the sidelines. I'm Roger Twybo. We have 12-22 left to go in this football game, and Oklahoma leads Southern Cal by a score of 10-7. What we thought was going to be a high-scoring offensive battle has been a real defensive struggle so far. It was a 3-0 game at halftime, then 10-0 Oklahoma. And Johnson, the quarterback, hit Conway a few moments ago with a 51-yard touchdown pass. That intended for 19, Travis Hanna. Darnell Walker, back on the coverage, a senior from St. Louis, Missouri. And all throughout the afternoon, the Oklahoma defense has been putting pressure on Rob Johnson, who's been coming in the form of number 40, Reggie Barnes, an outside linebacker, and his partner, Aubrey Beavers. They've had good pressure all day, making some phenomenal plays, causing turnovers and setting up points for the Oklahoma offense. Cale Gundy, the uh, quarterback for the University of Oklahoma, checking with his offensive coordinator, Larry Corker, upstairs. Second down and 10, 49-yard line. 11.59 left to go in this game, and the handoff up the middle. That's Dwight McFadden, the freshman out of Lawton, Oklahoma. And for those of you watching Florida, Tennessee, we're going to send you to New York and John Saunders. Third down situation, upcoming for Southern Cal. Third, and let's call it five at the 44 of Oklahoma. Checking into the game, number one, Larry Wallace, Curtis Conway back in there, and both Wallace and Conway, number one and three, will split to the far side. And Johnson wants a timeout. That's the first timeout for Southern Cal in the second half with 11.20 to go. They trail Oklahoma 10-7. Come back here to Norman, third down and five at the 44-yard line for Southern Cal. They trail it by three. Look for Rob Johnson to look to his wide receivers on the far side of the field in combination. Out of the shotgun. Pressure. Johnson just throws it away. Johnson just got rid of it. Five, Malin Wesley and 40, Reggie Barnes. The two men in his face. And Johnson did a good job just to get rid of the football. He sure did. Take a look at the pressure below 56. Beavers coming underneath, beating Tony Pacelli to the inside. Then the pressure on the outside, forcing a bad throw. That's excellent defensive pressure away from the point of attack. Beavers has got five solo tackles, a couple of quarterback sacks, and a fumble recovery. Stun Stonehouse now back at the 39-yard line. Angles it to the near side. Oh, 
And that is a very good punt by the uh, true freshman. And they're going to spot it at the nine-yard line. And I want to remind you, coming up next here on ABC Sports, it'll be the seventh-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame as they head to East Lansing to take on the Michigan State Spartans. That's coming up next here on ABC. I'll tell you, Stonehouse has had three punts down inside the 20 today. So it's been a very effective part of the special teams for Southern Cal. Oklahoma, 11.08. Left to go. We saw the uh, Cowboys of Oklahoma State hanging tough against Michigan. A handoff to the right side. They keep trying to run it. Not much success. Let's go to Dean Blevins. See, secondary coach Bob Cope is very pleased. He just talked to his squad and said he felt like they were playing outstanding. No changes. Feels like putting pressure on quarterback Gundy is the key and feels like USC has the momentum at this point. Hey, thank you very much, Kenyon Rashid, on that uh, last carry. Playing with those bruised ribs gives you an idea of his, uh, his toughness, his desire to play in this game. That was also the option again. Yeah, it was. Second down and eight. For, for the, the diehard fans of Oklahoma. For the diehard fans. Second and eight from the 11-yard line. Checking off is Cale Gundy. They pull a guard. Fumble inside. Loose ball. Southern Cal's got it. Southern Cal's got it. Step on pace. Touchdown! 19 yards on the return of the fumble by Stefan Pace, the senior from Duarte, California. And once again, the defense comes up big. And that's the reason why you want to keep a running game so you control the ball. He just left it in the backfield. And then it squirts through all the traffic. How a football squirts through all the traffic, you never know. But then, number nine, Stephon Pace picks it up. And the rule changes where the defense uh, can't advance a fumble, puts him in the end zone for the touchdown. Got to wonder, that was the handoff to Kenyon Rashid, Lynn, as the uh, extra point is up and good by Cole Ford. He's got the bruise rips. Didn't look like he ever got the ball at all. And all of a sudden, Southern Cal, with 10-17 to go, leads Oklahoma 14-10. Cal has taken a 14-10 lead over the Oklahoma Sooners. Stephon Pace with the fumble return for the touchdown, 19 yards. And the defense, there's uh, Bob Cope, the uh, secondary coach, formerly coached at Kansas State in the Big 8, so he's very familiar with uh, the uh, scheme of things with Oklahoma. And Ford to kick it off. Duell Brewer will let it bounce and go through the end zone. And we'll take uh, another look at uh, the defensive play, the ability for the uh, college players to, to return from us. So we, talked about, them. we talked about the turnover in the first half that, uh, excuse me, in the second half that allowed Oklahoma to score. Here Oklahoma turns the ball over. Rashid never having a handle on it. And we couple that with the new rule change. And it's a touchdown for USC and gives them the lead, 14 to 10. So this has been a defensive battle today. 10-17 to go fourth quarter. Not over with by a long shot. 14-10, Trojans lead it. As Cale Gundy will send trips to the far side. Rashid the lone setback. Coming around the end. Good stutter step right there. Still going as Ernest Williams. And might have been a late hit. I don't see a... F now a flag is thrown. That flag was thrown a good five seconds after the player was already out of bounds. And it's against Southern Cal. We talk about pursuit. Both teams have been aggressive. Watch right here. Yeah, Willie McGinnis, that was late. That was a late hit. And it wasn't It wasn't a hit, it was a push, but it was just late, and, they, and the officials made a good call. That's going to move the ball up to the 46-yard line, so it'll be first and 10. Now with 10 minutes, 9 seconds to go in this game, I think we're going to see Oklahoma try and open it up with some plays like that that reverse. Trips to the far side once again. Albert Hall, P.J. Mills are split out that way. 
It'll give it to Rashid off the left tackle. He gets about three to the 49-yard line. Brian Williams, uh, one of the men on top of the pile as they unravel. Also there is uh, Jeff Cock, who's had a real good day. The sophomore from Danville. And uh, Kenyon Rashid, after that fumble, would like to uh, move something on this drive. Get it back and get it going for the Sooners. Cops got six tackles, five solo tackles today. Second down and seven, 49-yard line. Third straight play, trips to the far side for the Sooners. I'll tell you what, Gundy had a lot of room in front of him. He found Joey Mickey, and they say incomplete. Joey Mickey, number 82, I don't think ever had control of it. He had, a, had his back to us here. But look at how Gundy buys himself more time by rolling out. Ball thrown on the money. You see there, he never really has control of it and drops it right there. Incomplete pass. Well, the starting tight end for Oklahoma, Brady, is out for this game uh, with a broken rib. The Sooners are off next week, and then they get Iowa State, and they expect him back by the Iowa State game. But uh, Brady, the better receiver of the two, Mickey, the bigger tight end, the better blocker, and once again trips to the far side. Third down and seven at the 49-yard line. On that last play, Gundy could have run 25 yards. There was nobody in front of him. And he goes out there again, throwing on the run. Wide open, but dropped. Not a good pass, but Corey Warren had it in his hands. There's a low pass to Corey Warren, but in talking with their offensive coordinator, Larry Coker, he said, Gundy, a little bit unorthodox, throws the ball extremely well from on the run in an awkward position, Jan, with that little combination pass pattern. His man is wide open. That was a ball that should have been caught. I mean, he had both hands on it. It's, it's a tough catch. He should have caught it. Uh, that's where the receiver comes into play to help his quarterback and, and to make up to compensate for the pass. Tenth punt for Brad Riddell. That is a personal high as Conway takes it at the 12. It's dropped immediately there. Number 36 on the coverage, Robert O'Neill. And next Saturday, ABC's College Football presents four big regional matchups. Many of you will see Heisman Trophy candidate Marshall Falk in San Diego State Battle of UCLA. In the Midwest, sixth-ranked Michigan takes on Houston. Down south, Ole Miss meets Georgia. Or Iowa heads into the Rockies to challenge Colorado. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station and call your local cable operator to find out which of these regional games will be available to you live on pay-per-view. That's next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. The Oklahoma football defense came onto the field urging the crowd to get in the game, and you can hear the response. Hand off to the fullback, Mooney. They don't go to the fullback very often, and they never really have at Southern Cal, tailback you. Sam but Mooney Cunningham. Was, yeah, well. Sam Cunningham when I played with the fullback at USC. He had 10 flat speed or 9 9 speed and a 100 yard dash. Very, very strong, known for going over the top in the short plays. Played him at fullback most of the time. Great block. As much a tradition of USC for the fullback to be that kind of player as the tailback to be of the O.J. Simpson quality. The second and eight, and Johnson comes near side to Travis Hanna at the 21-yard line, short of the first down. Darnell Walker makes the stop. USC can ill afford just to sit on the football at this point in time. They still have to put the ball in the air, move it downfield. They've still got third and a long four in this situation. But they've got to take some risks, still put the ball in the air, move it, mix it up, move it around. Third down and three. USC 5 of 13 in third down situations. In a similar third down situation, USC's last possession, I thought they could have given Rob Johnson some help by rolling out. They had trips to the far side, wide open outside, and making the catch. There's a penalty marker down as Larry Wallace, the senior from Stockton, California, was wide open, but there is a penalty marker down back inside the 15-yard line. USC will run in five or six different receivers during the course of the afternoon. Oklahoma likes to do the same thing. Illegal formation, offense, five-yard penalty. Now, in that time, they had the trips to the far side, but they were all very close together. There was no spacing between them. And uh, the illegal offensive formation. Let's check in with Dean Blevins. Dean? As you know, Curtis Conway has been a big player in this ballgame. He's been out, although 
Uh, he says he will play regularly. His, his back is giving him problems. He was actually lying on flat on his belly, and I went up and talked to him, and he said, i got to go back in. And as you see, he's sort of been in and out. But the back is giving Cur Curtis Conway a problem. It's Curtis, nine receptions, 114 yards, both career highs for Curtis Conway, Jr. from uh, Hawthorne High School in Los Angeles. Counted for 69 touchdowns in his high school career. And Southern Cal has used their second timeout with 8.30 to go. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Fourth quarter action in the pouring rain between Florida and Tennessee. Heath Shuler running this one in for his second touchdown of the game. Keep in mind, Florida hasn't lost an SEC game in two years, and that was to Tennessee. Meanwhile, number four losing. How about number five, Texas A&M? They are down 10 to nothing to Missouri. That game in the second quarter. Back to you, Roger. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate that. Well, we saw Missouri last week, Lynn, do a terrific job in the second half defensively, and uh, John Lindsay said he needed to find some answers to the to the myriad of questions he had about that defensive yeah. unit, and apparently the fact that uh, a and has no points in the scoreboard, he found a few answers and a few players. Well, he's got, to, he's got some big answers, and it, boy, what a beautiful day it is here in Norman, Oklahoma, after looking at that quagmire <laughs> in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, the forecast for today was supposed to be in the upper 70s mm -hmm. and clear skies maybe some wind but the wind hasn't seemed to be a real factor in today's ball game it's overcast the players love it because the, the overcast conditions help them stay in better shape than not searching their lungs aren't reaching for the air the air is there in the cold atmosphere third down and eight at the let's call it the 16 yard line eight minutes 30 seconds left to go Conway is back in the game Johnson out of the shotgun. He's going to run with it. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gets an extra yard. William Shankel, number eight. And Reggie Barnes, number 40, the defensive players to make the stop. Is that a design play? Was that a run from the start? Well, it's, it's what the defensive pressure is causing that's making things happen. Take a look at this. These guys are going to stay home here. The pressure's going to come the outside, both sides, forcing him to run here back into these guys. And that's a coaching designed uh, tackle right here as he takes off and runs and he's back into those same people. The guys stay home, listen to their coaches, execute the defense. John Stonehouse at the two-yard line and there seems to be a little confusion. Stonehouse talking with his up back. And Brewer waving for the fair catch and he is hit by a Southern Cal player at the 45-yard line. Don Cunningham Number 37 hitting as Brewer was signaling for the fair catch. Two, play, two officials back on the call. One official starts to go for his flag, doesn't pull it out. Why? Because I believe the guy from USC was blocked into the return man. He's trying to slow down. You see the fair catch signal. Now watch right there. The man who hits him was actually pushed. The officials are conferring at the moment. Maybe we can get a better angle at it here, Lynn. I'll take another look. He comes down. Yeah, he was, was pushed ball. right there and blocked into him. He's well, trying to avoid them. But you know what? I mean, it looked like to a point that Darius Johnson, 42, they just collided with each other. 15-yard penalty. Oh. No, they're going to call the penalty I, on Southern Cal. I, now, 42 is Darius Johnson I, of Oklahoma. And he's, and he's coming down. He's blocking him right there. Pushes well, him. Darius Johnson was on the inside, and Cunningham was behind him. They... See, Cunningham's angle, to me, was right at Brewer. And it, it appeared as though Darius Johnson cut him off, and Cunningham tried to pull up, but then didn't, didn't stop. Now, whether he didn't see the fair catch called or what, I don't know. Well, it, it, it's, it's not a matter of whether he saw the fair catch called or not. I mean, that's, it's, he made the good signal, but it just, in that, in that angle, it looked like he did cut him off from the front, and the other angle looked like he pushed him. Great field position for Oklahoma. First and 10 from the 40-yard line with 7.39 left to go, and Gundy to the air. What a defensive play right there. The man back was Jason Seahorn, the junior college transfer from Shasta up in Northern California, as Brewer was the intended receiver. Well, take a look at this. Gundy needs to get this pass up a little bit. He has been off today. But it's a great play by Seahorn as he dives out in front and makes that grab. If that ball is just out in front of the receiver where it should be, it doesn't have to be any faster, that's a good catch, and he might still be running. This kid never played high school uh, football. He was a baseball player in the Cubs organization and then went to Shasta JC where he was a receiver and punt returner and just moved to defense this year. Second and 10 
from the 40-yard line. Gundy, an inside pass, still on his feet, going down to the 32-yard line was King Collins, Jason Seahorn, Stephon Pace, and that's a pass play you're seeing more of in college football where they're trying to cut that receiver back along the line of scrimmage and then let him run up the middle line. Now watch this. This almost looks like a pick right here. Mm -hmm which is actually illegal. You see the guys coming up there? That's Brewer. Right, but he's behind the line of scrimmage. It's a screen. He can do that. That's what makes the play legal. A fast developing screen. Very right fast out. developing. Third down and two for Oklahoma. <laughs> and off the right side, Brewer is going to be close to the first down. Now it looks like he needed to get inside the 30. Jason Seahorn came up to make the tackle, and the spot's going to be... Now they're going to spot it about the 31-yard uh, line. Very interesting as the clock ticks down from 6 minutes and 35 seconds, whether Gary Gibbs decides to go for the touchdown or the field goal. They're into the wind, and in all honesty, Blanton hasn't been the most prolific field goal kicker in Oklahoma annals. He's no Uwe Von Schaumann. 4 of 12 a year ago, although he's hit one today on fourth down. And no, Moore doesn't get it. SC defense comes up big. Stephon Pace and Brian Williams over there. I would have thought, Roger, that he would have gone to the outside with this. Because SC's defensive line has been tough all day in the middle of the field. In the middle of this line. They've come hard. They've knocked this offensive line of Oklahoma's back. They do a good job. And number five, Brian Williams, who has been coming through the inside all day long. Free up, bring up on blocks. Coming inside, the good charging by a defensive lineman has made key plays. And again, he makes the initial contact and drives Brewer back. They take a loss on that play. Southern Cal takes over first and 10 at the 31-yard line. 6.15 left to go. Creighton, he might have gotten a yard off the left side. And we reiterate, both of these coaches, Lynn, told us this game would be decided by the seven men up front. There's so much freelancing done in defense today. We saw a young player last week uh, at uh, Simeon Illinois, Rice. Simeon Rice, who was a freelancer. We're seeing the same thing today with Williams and a number of players. They just let these guys roam, and these, the blockers, they don't quite know where to get them. Well, but they can only do that if one player, two players is roaming and go inside or outside, if the other players protect and fill in the gaps. Second and nine at the 33, and they'll hand it up the middle. And once again, well, that's a nice spin move there. McFadden was able to elude one tackler to avoid a loss. Got it back to the line of scrimmage. Mario Freeman, the freshman from Austin, Texas, and Mike Coates, a junior from Oklahoma City, came up to make the stop. There's a look at the young man from Lawton, Oklahoma, the redshirt freshman. Will he be the next great Southern Cal tailback? We keep looking for that. We know who the body is. Baselli 71 is the body. We're trying to identify the student in that student <laughs> body right now. Third down and seven. From the 34. Johnson. Hit. Had a man open. On the near side, Travis Hanna was there, and Johnson was hit. Drew Chrisman, 24, the strong side safety, came up to make the stick. But it looked like Hanna was open, and I'll tell you what, Johnson limps off the field. And collapses there on the bench. And remember, Reggie Perry is a veteran, started last year as the backup this year. We'll take a look at it as he gets in. He's rolling out. He's going to get a good block here by Estes Creighton on Brewer that gives him a little more time. And there's a hit coming right. up right there on the knee. Drew Chrisman, number 24. The helmet right on the knee is what it appeared, Lynn. Yeah. And he, he can't speculate as to how bad he's hurt. You know it's painful. Fourth and seven, Stonehouse with his seventh punt of the day. Brewer will take it at the 23, and he is dumped immediately. Number 46 for Southern Cal was down there on the stop, and that was Bruce Luzzi. Good special teams player, a veteran of the Southern Cal defensive team. So Luizzi was their 91 special teams player of the year. He comes down to make the hit, and they're still working on the left knee, taking a good look at Rob Johnson's left knee. And as they're working on Johnson, Reggie Perry, number 16, should be warming up somewhere on the sideline. 4.47 left to go. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Oklahoma has all three of its timeouts remaining. 
It's been a struggle today for Cale Gundy. He's got a receiver open on the far side, Corey Warren, and that'll be enough for the first down up to the 34-yard line. 13 yards in the pickup, and warming up on the sideline for the Trojans of Southern California is Reggie Perry. That's Larry Smith. That's Larry Smith talking to him, trying to get him fired up. You know, and there was a battle between he and Johnson in spring practice and double days. There was a headline in the papers. He said Perry out to rob Johnson <laughs> of the job. Well, the people of Southern Cal is Oklahoma wants a timeout right now. Some confusion there. Oklahoma takes a timeout with 427 left to go, and we'll keep it here at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, as uh, Gundy will go over and talk to his coaches on the uh, far side. On the near side, the uh, quarterback for Southern Cal, Rob Johnson, is uh, trying to walk it off. He, he got hit with the helmet. Drew Christman's helmet hit the knee. And I, and, and I believe what the trainers were doing on the sideline are the following. First, get him over there, ask him, exactly where he feels the pain in terms of the knee then check the knee structurally make sure that it's not a cartilage or they can't throw anything loose in there or there's not as much play in the knee as he normally would have uh, then make a determination it may just be a bruise maybe ice it down that kind of thing but you've got to be careful sometimes when you ice it because it gets cold and the legs freeze up and you're not as active as you want to be. Let's go down to Dean Blevins, Dean. Lynn, you're exactly right. Good news for USC fans. The injury to Johnson is just a thigh bruise. He's expected to go back in in just a minute. Okay, thank you, Dean. But it's, it's a nice feeling for Larry Smith to know that he has a Reggie Perry, a veteran, a guy who's, uh, you know, started for him, taking a lot of snaps, and, uh, you know, is available. Actually, they tell you the truth. Reggie Perry's talent, the way the defense is playing for Oklahoma, might be a good thing to have in the ball game because they're giving him a lot of room to run. Johnson, let Re Reggie come in the game, roll out, and take advantage of that. It might be just a good tactical thing to do on the next possession. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Gundy has thrown it 30 times today, looking one more time, and he can't get away from number 44, David Webb, the senior from Irvine, California. And there's Webb. I, you know, we were looking for our makeup uh, artist before we went on the air today. And now I know where she went. I mean, she was down on the field working on Webb. Yeah, no well, 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 there's a guy named Richard Wood that played, played at USC. They called him Batman. Gideon Merrill calls himself Batman at times. But David Webb has done his makeup a la Batman. And he's got some speed. He just stays with it as Gundy makes a mistake of dancing around too much in that backfield. Two sacks, 16 yards, second down and 16 from the 28. Gundy will roll out, looking downfield, intercepted. Intercepted by Stephon Pace. And a bad decision by Cale Gundy right there. Two bad decisions. I don't think Gundy's decision to throw the ball was not as bad as the failure of the receiver to come back to the ball and cut off the defensive back. Stephon Pace makes a great move here, seeing the ball and coming up. But look at how the receiver rounds off the route. If he squares it off, he's in front of the receiver. Take another look from the end zone. Gundy's got a man that's going to be open, but he doesn't run the sharp route. He rounds it off, giving Pace the opportunity. Oh, what a big day for Pace. The uh, fumble recovery for the touchdown. Now the interception with 343 left to go. They'll hand it to McFadden. McFadden's got some room. He's brought down. Loose ball. He should have been called down already. And they have. They've called him down at the 36-yard line. McFadden, the redshirt freshman, found a seam in the left side and picked up about eight yards. Running behind uh, Gorecki and Chrisman. There's a look at Pace. There is Pace. on Pace. I mean, in terms of picking the Chevy players of the game, I have a hard time between Pace and Webb. I mean, these both both guys have played great ball games today. And Kopp has done a nice job, too, defensively. Second down and three. Just over three minutes left to go. Southern Cal leads it 14 to 10 against Oklahoma. They'll hand it to Mooney. The fullback still on his feet. Pounds inside the 30. First down, Southern Cal. Mike Mooney. 6'1", 235 pound senior from Temple City, California, had only carried twice for three yards coming into this game. And he got more than three on that play, I can guarantee you. 
Well, they've got two big, strong fullbacks. Wes Bender, 6'2", 245. Mooney, 6'1", 235. Mooney, three carries, 21 yards today. And when the clock's running down to under three minutes, and you've got a lead in good field position, that's when you go to that fullback. First and 10, 28-yard line for Southern Cal. Creighton. He'll pick up about four down to the 25-yard line. Oklahoma with two timeouts remaining. Mario Freeman, the freshman, number 44, makes the tackle. See what USC and Oklahoma have done rushing the football. Oklahoma, 30 carries for 50 yards. Not very, very good Not? at all. <laughs> yeah. USC stats aren't great either, but they've gotten some good runs at critical times and had a little success there. Now, Southern Cal to work the clock. We're at two minutes. Second down and seven. 28-yard line. McFadden. McFadden. Down to the two. Dwight McFadden, the redshirt freshman from Lawton, Oklahoma, comes home and busts it down inside the two to the one and a half yard line. From Lawton, Oklahoma, he's getting this football because not just because he's talented, but because he's playing in front of some friends at home. He gets a great opportunity, straight running on the inside, excellent blocking. He just fakes out William Shankle, number eight, in the middle of the field to get him down close to the end zone. And I'll tell you one thing. If I were on defense, I wouldn't worry about anybody else. I'd say I'm going to assume that McFadden's getting this ball because he is from Oklahoma. First, first and goal from the one. And they give it to McFadden. He leaps. He tried to do the Sam Bam Cunningham move. Didn't work that time. And he has stacked up a loss of about a yard there. Terry Collier came up to meet him. Yeah, but when you, spoke, when you dive over the top, you're supposed to dive over the top when you can reach the end zone, not from that far away. Timeout down on the field. Timeout against Oklahoma, so they have one timeout left. 1.19 to go. Good Southern Cal, a 6, 11, and 2 record. And I talked to him yesterday. I said, this is early season, but how big is this? He says, this is huge. He says, we have an off week next week. We have to go to Seattle to play Washington. Very big game. Second and goal from the one. They pitch it back to McFadden. What a nice defensive job over there by the University of Oklahoma's Mike Coates and Drew Chrisman. Drew Chrisman, they call him Crash Chrisman. He's quick, he's intelligent, strong player. Mike Coates, a junior, he's 230, came up, made some tough plays. Take another look at it. Watch how both 41 and 24 move to the outside following the flow. There's the hit, and there's the insurance. Smith. And uh, Oklahoma has used their, their last timeout. And Larry Smith and his offensive staff trying to figure out on third and goal now the ball back at the two-yard line. And Oklahoma with no timeouts remaining. One minute and ten seconds left to go. And Gary Gibbs, well, you know, they have had the sanctions in the last three years, but there's there's been a bit of a knock that, you know, Gibbs hasn't won the big games. He hasn't beaten Texas. Hadn't beaten Colorado. He's one and two against Nebraska. And he's lost a number of players that normally would come to Oklahoma. He hasn't had the numbers in terms of scholarships. So there are some reasons why that has happened. And one of the big things that was important to the fans here at Oklahoma was getting a kill Gundy to go to school here. If he had lost him, uh, I, I think he would have been hard-pressed uh, to, to build a football team to be competitive uh, in Division I football in terms of moving it towards a passing team. But when you got Kill Gundy, the alumni say, hey, we got a homegrown athlete here who's quality, he's going to lead this team, and that gave him a little more staying power. 14 to 10, Southern Cal, third down and goal from the two-yard line. Number six, Dwight McFadden, the redshirt freshman, is in there. So at what point do you decide, okay, Dwight, we may, maybe we can't get you the touchdown, but we just got the score. Both Bender and Mooney, the fullbacks, the two upbacks, as they give it to McFadden again, and he is stuffed. He is stuffed on the right side. Oh, this Oklahoma defense has come up with a great goal line stand here. Mike Coates, 41, one of the first players to hit him. And also moving up on the tackle, David Campbell. You see 59, the nose tackle, but Oklahoma cannot stop the clock. And... What will Southern Cal do? Will they go ahead and try to go in on fourth down? Will they kick the field goal to give them a seven-point lead as the Let clock the continues clock to run? Down. He says, Reggie! Reggie! Now, Reggie Perry has come in at quarterback, and Larry Smith, Smith is trying to get his attention. 
30 seconds left to go. Perry, the option, Reggie Perry, touchdown. It was interesting as Larry Smith was yelling at him to let the clock run down. We talked about Reggie being an experienced quarterback. He let the play clock run down to about three seconds left on it. Then he executes the play. I mentioned that he would be the best man tactically in this situation because he can run the ball. As he comes out with the option, Rob Johnson could not run this play and get into the end zone. Only Reggie Perry on this football team today. Hey, one play, one touchdown. Way to go. Huh? Hey, I'll take it. Reggie Perry who uh, is from not too far away, Denison, Texas. And it's 20 to 10 with the extra point attempt coming up from Cole Ford. And it's no good. 26 seconds to go. And Lynn, we always talk about at the top of the game, your checklist, what to look forward to. Let's let's see what you got, passing, failing, or maybe even an incomplete or two. Well, we, we have some of that. Control the line of scrimmage, USC, want to do that? I think they failed because the defense of Oklahoma played them so, so tough. More big plays in Oklahoma. I think I'm going to have to give them a pass. It was pretty close. Pressure Gundy. I don't think they pressured Gundy well enough. Well, I might disagree with you on you that. Know, and then you play with emotional intensity. They played well. I don't think they're as high as they should have been, but they did control the perimeter. They went, they were ahead in the ball game, but I think they only passed on three of the things they set out to do, on five of the things they set out to do. Now, we go to Oklahoma. I think they did a real good job for the most part on their checklist, but they didn't control Mort Conway. He got away on the big play. All right, USC did not assault them, so they passed there. Uh, they disrupt Rob Johnson? Yes, absolutely they disrupted Rob Johnson today. Uh, succeed with the run, they failed in that department, and they did not dictate the tempo of the game. Okay, well, we agree on most everything. Uh, by the way, Cole Ford, that was the first uh, point after he'd missed after 27 straight, and the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Stefan Pace from the University of Southern California and Aubrey Beavers from Oklahoma. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial needs. So it was a couple of defensive players that came through as our Chevrolet players of the game and these two coaches knew what they were talking about when they said it'll be the upfront people that will decide the game they said defense is going to be, uh, be a big part these are two teams that had scored a lot of points in their first uh, two games and look at that 20 points in the fourth quarter for southern cal so they reversed what happened to them that first week against san diego state and because they were successful that score stays down but just as easily the score could have been much higher. A couple of breakdowns here and there, a couple of bad plays by uh, either either team's defense could have been a very quick and strong touchdown. Both teams have next week off, and uh, Oklahoma then gets ready for Iowa State, which has not been an easy chore for them in, in the recent past. They lost to them down in Norman in, in 89, and in 90, uh, the Cyclones uh, uh, lost to the by. Uh, I should say the Cyclones upset the Sooners 33-31 in their last visit to Norman in 1990 and lost by three at Ames in 89 as the kickoff goes to Williams, number 20. And Williams got some room to the outside, and he'll be knocked out of bounds. And a penalty marker goes down. And that fighting tempers are flying on the sideline. Folks, I have to tell you, this is one of the toughest places to play the sidelines in any college arena in the world. There is not much room between the out-of-bounds and a wall and the benches in between. So when the player comes streaking down the sideline like that and it gets a late hit... Well, now the Southern Cal players are coming over to the other side because the officials and the security people were not able to get to this thing immediately. So now all the players out on the field and trying to get everything separated. And you see that man in the middle there. That is uh, Lucius Selman. When you listen to Lucius, when he says, get back, you get back. He's a tough player here, and he doesn't take anything. No. You don't want to get that man angry at you. Well, you have to have a and dominant voice of reason in a situation like that. A lot of the Southern Cal players gesturing at the uh, Oklahoma uh, fans, but some of them actually going over toward the corner where there's a small group of uh, Southern Cal uh, supporters and waving at them. And there's a player being uh, helped That's off Jason the field Seahorn. right there. Seahorn, number 18. Started this afternoon ball game at free safety for the Trojans. Triple foul. Ejection. Southern Cal. 15-yard penalty. And the 15-yard penalty against Southern Cal. 
Let's, uh, let's check the tail end of the play as a, a very disappointed Gary Gibbs uh, looks on. Now, see, he's out of bounds, and he's hit there by yeah. number 14 of the Trojans, and that's Cole Ford, the kicker. I mean, what in the world's he doing over there? A little overzealous. I, I, I have to, I I have to tell you, it was very poor coverage by USC. Yeah. For that ball bouncing around as much as it did, not to have more players downfield, uh, was, was, was not good. And Cole Ford came across, and I don't know what he was looking at, uh, he should have been able to see that he was out of bounds and he should not be in such a hurry to make the play He should be uh, the last uh, wall of support there or well, You just want to get out of town, you know, I mean you just want to kick it off You just want to cover it and you want to get out of town here leading 20 to 10 I, I mentioned uh, Oklahoma with next week off and then Iowa State uh, Southern Cal with a week off then go to Seattle where the last time they were up there They uh, lost 31 to nothing to Washington And you see how deep uh, the uh, Trojans defenders all the way back to the goal line as Gundy is just going to throw it up in the air, let it go, and it's going to be picked off in the end zone. 23, John Herpin was the man back there to pick it off. So the uh, passing game of Oklahoma did not get it done today because the defensive scheme of Southern Cal had all the answers for Cale Gundy and company. Nine seconds remain on the clock here in Norman, Oklahoma. But for the Trojans football program, which suffered through a 3-8 and eight season last year, they had lost six games in a row. That was a school record. Lynn, having played there, you know what a big win this is for Larry Smith and the Trojans. A tremendous win for those players coming back from last year. Uh, very important in terms of the, the, the national reputations on the line between Oklahoma and USC. And so now they feel better. They've gotten a monkey off that back, so to speak, and they can take a week off, and they'll head up to Washington in their first Pac-10 game. And that'll do it as the clock will wind down, and uh, Harry Smith gets doused with the uh, ice-cold water. He doesn't mind at all. 2010, the final. Southern Cal has beaten Oklahoma here in Norman. And that stops a string of 14 consecutive victories against non-conference opponents for Oklahoma going back to 1984. So for Dean Blevins and Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twivell. Stay tuned now for the thrifty car rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Final score, Southern Cal 20, Oklahoma 10. Thanks for being with us, everybody. And we'll be there. Well, this is the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report, along with uh, Lynn Swan. I'm Roger Twibo in Norman, Oklahoma, where Southern Cal has just won their first football game in over 11 months. Lynn, 20 to 10, the final against Oklahoma. They'll take this back to Southern California and get prepared. Use this as a platform to go against the Washington Huskies in Seattle two weeks from now, their first Pac-10 game. Final numbers from the game, and uh, I think when you look at them, uh, you know, some people who would argue that maybe Oklahoma, I think about the wishbone again, you see the rushing yards 50. Yeah, and, and they were trying to put the ball in the air. They were up against it all afternoon. USC had the ball, but they moved it up and down the field, didn't get a lot of scoring opportunities until the defense made the big play. Uh, I think the uh, uh, thing you look at, 340 total yards, they're very impressive, and the defense for Southern Cal came up big. We'll be back with more right after this. 10, the uh, final, Southern Cal with the victory over Oklahoma, and Dean Blevins had a chance to chat with Larry Smith. Larry, big win, hadn't won since last October. Monkey off your back? Yeah, big, big monkey. Long time coming, but credit our football team. They just hung in there and, and just stayed after and looked they were behind 10 to nothing. They never quit. I mean, I felt in halftime better in this game than I did uh, two weeks ago when we had 21 to 7. They just... Uh, set their mind to doing it. It's a great win, and uh, the credit goes to the football team. Seemed like your defensive pressure on Oklahoma, and there, certainly on Gundy, was the key. Yeah, I think that was the real key. Our, our, that constant pressure and not giving them a chance for a big play, and I just, uh, it was a great game offensively, too. It was just uh, kicking. It was a team game. That's what we wanted to play. Finally, you're off next week, then you have Washington. You ready for them? You bet you. We'll be ready. Congratulations, okay, Coach. 2010, the final. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs>